Okay, one moment. Right, there we go. Just change that. Uh, give me just a second. I'm afraid the resolution always goes a bit wonky when I try to stream this. Let me just pause that. Okay, so OBS there. Don't move it. So I've got, I've got OBS in the top right corner, and if I fuck up and click that corner, then it opens OBS and minimizes the game, which is most irritating. There we go. Load. That should work okay. Right. Um, hi, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Uh, wow, that was a, a pretty quick day of editing. Oh, well, I'll tell you why in a minute. But, um, yeah, I didn't... Bugger. I didn't get as much done as I was hoping. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. So I'm trying to finish Divinity Bullshittery Part One, and I had a few hours sapped from my editing efforts today by virtue of the fact that I had to email some artists. So I've got three artists that are that are providing some commissioned work, so assets that I, that I can animate, and two of them came back with some work today. And oh my god, it's brilliant! Holy shit! Um, oh, I can't wait to. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to animate it and show it to you guys, but holy crap. Um, yeah, exciting. Uh, so one of those three artists is in, f in, is in fact Bu Bu Dingo, so you've probably seen her work all over the place. The other two are Twisty and Nervous Hawk. Uh, Nervous Hawk did the Carl art, you know, the, the Woo one, and Twisty's done pretty much all of the art, in fact. So all of the channel art, the avatar, everything. So I've got three, three pretty... Oh, oh, bugger. Oh no. My French press handle just broke off. Hang on. Uh, shit. No, my coffee. Okay, hold on. A disaster. Um, how am I gonna fix this? So basically, the, sorry, the end of the French press has sunk into the coffee and I can't fish it out. Okay, I'm gonna have to get a fork or something. Um, right, bear with me. Uh, so game pause, submarine. Um, yeah, no coffee, no stream, crisis. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get the thing in a minute. Um, what was I saying? So, uh, yes, so um, Divinity Bullshittery is 19 minutes long, so it's twice the length of a typical bullshittery. So I'm doing my best, but uh, all the same, it is a difficult one as well. I've got the video end-to-end. -end. Uh, I'm just trying to polish it. I've got this, la this laundry list of fuck-ups that I'm trying to go through and fix, whilst also trying to get some art that I can edit into an animation, which I hope will look cool. And... Um, yeah, going to need more time. Uh, I'm doing my best, but I'm going to need more time. Am, am I too quiet? Sorry, let me bring the microphone closer. Thank you, Scorpi Nico. Thank you. Also, that does sound a bit loud. Have I fucked up the audio? One moment, sorry. Ah, uh, volume settings. Uh, yeah, I think I did. Sorry, let me just fiddle with this. Put that down there. Put that there. And then Silent Hunter there. That should be fine. Maximize. Right, that should be good. Did I sink yesterday? No, it's shifty. We we managed to save the the U-boat. We were very badly damaged, but we did successfully save the U-boat. Also, hi there, social ZF socials in the chat, folks. Um, right. So, let me just bring up the map so you can see where we are. So we are right here off the coast of Great Britain. Uh, well, off the coast of Ireland, but uh, yeah, we're we're near the British Isles. And right now, we're trying to hunt shipping, uh, doing a short patrol in April 1941 and then we'll return to our U-boat pen at St. Nazir send the men on leave and then hopefully if I time it right hopefully we'll be able to see the Bismarck fingers crossed because it's next month uh, it's famous voyage thank you Artie um, right one one minute let me just try and fish my fish the uh, I don't know what to call it like the net thing of the French press out of the French press one minute <coughs>
A uh, quick update on the French press situation, which is obviously the most pressing issue compared to, you know, the Second World War. Um, it's broken, completely. Like, the, the thing at the end uh, has completely snapped off. But don't worry, I have a plan. Wait for it. <coughs> Blimey. <laughs> Covered in dust on top of the cupboard is a backup French press. I have a backup French press just in case... Ew, it's covered in crap. Okay, I've got to clean this. It's revolting. Sorry, bear with me. So there we go. Sorry for the delayed start. Okay, so I managed to get the backup French press cleaned, and then I discovered that I've actually gone through all of the sugar, so we have a jar of honey instead. English heather honey. Hmm. Okay. So yes, how's everyone doing? You all okay? How was everyone's day today in the chat? Did you all have a nice smooth day? Over here, editing was fine, just got a bit distracted with emails. Um, okay, thank you, the Cranky Cowboy. Uh, Vicious uh, Spiegel is good. Hi there. Happy day, says Valentino. Cooking stream when, says Grish. Oh, my, my kitchen is tiny. There's no chance. Um, long, says Rethus. Wasn't that good, uh, Pater Pilo says. I hope you feel better soon, or have a better time soon. Welcome, the King of Spain. And thank you, Camel. Thank you very much, Camel. Right. You know I don't often buy games that are newly released and wait for the reviews. What about companies with a proven track record? Nope. Nope. Uh, Fat Pingu. Just, nope. No. Nope. Every company can shit the bed and produce a stinker. Past performance doesn't uh, indicate the future. Right. There we go. Especially remember that software development studios are ships of Theseus. They're continually changing staff all the time. That's just the nature of the beast. That's not doesn't mean anything's wrong with the studio. Uh, people only work in certain positions for a certain amount of time, perhaps even just one project, and then they move on. Why? Better money. Simple. Uh, so people are continually switching between companies, between types of software. So yeah, over time, naturally, a, a development team will not be the same. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Lurzy and the Camel and the Cranky Cowboy, Artie, Centurio Plays, Scorpy, Cloud, Skybird, and Near Cry. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Um, and yes, for those asking how I know that, it's because I spent 10 years in software development as a quality assurance analyst, uh, so QA, and then later a senior. So, yeah, our teams change all the time, along with all other teams and people who we work with. The processes are supposed to stay the same, mind, but, you know... Uh, Sometimes 
sometimes just a development team isn't very competent, frankly. Right, anyway. Coffee. Good, good, good. So, um, a quick update then. So, what's going on? Uh, yeah, very briefly. So, Divinity Bullshittery is being worked on as best I can, trying to polish the bugger, but nevertheless, there's still quite a few fuck-ups in the tail end of it that I need to fix. Um, as for right now, welcome to 1941. So, for those not familiar, what's going on? Uh, Britain is more or less on her own against this... Pretty much most, if not all of this, uh, particularly... Well, oh, bugger. No, the game has crashed on me. <laughs> Alright then. Okay, it's going to be one of those streams, I think. Um, <coughs> right, it's loaded again. So yes, uh, Britain stands alone against the might of Nazi Germany and her Axis allies. Uh, so over to the far east, Japan is doing its thing against China. Uh, but it really, it hasn't... It, well, America hasn't properly entered the war officially... Uh, to really give us a helping hand. Uh, the French tried their best and then immediately collapsed like a, well, like a, a stale cake. Um, and uh, I don't know what that analogy was. Uh, anyway, so France collapsed. Uh, Polish got, the, Pol the Poles got completely eaten up and they're doing their best. But holy shit, uh, what chance did they really have? And um, yeah, so one by one, countries are either falling into the Axis uh, or uh, are, be are basically being consumed by it. So, Britain is currently shouldering the lion's share of the blood spilled in this war. That's going to rapidly change soon with the invasion of the Soviet Union, and then all of a sudden the casualties will be spiking heavily on the Eastern Front, but right now Britain bleeds badly. The only thing keeping us in this fight are the convoy supplies coming in, and we, as the Kriegsmarine, sorry, so I'm playing as a U-boat, it's our job to try and stop that. We need to sink transports, convoys, so food, fuel, uh, weapons, replacement aircraft, destroyers, whatever really. We need to sink all of the incoming material, notably from, um, from America, in order to stop uh, Britain, or rather, sorry, more specifically, to bring Britain to the negotiating table. Invasion of the UK is not feasible. It just isn't. The Royal Navy is just too fucking strong. No amount of... Uh, you know, spit and uh, so, uh, boot polish and spit is going to get that job done uh, because the Royal Navy will just strangle you the moment you try to land. So um, the only way that they're going to stop the UK is to negotiate, and the best way to do that would be to starve the population, as horrible as that sounds. So that's Hitler's plan. So as for recent events then, let's just have a quick look at the timeline. So uh, the Luftwaffe continues its bombing campaign throughout April. They're actually doing a lot of damage and a lot of people have died. Um, so all across the UK, lot, thousands of, upon thousands of civilians now lie dead and buried in the rubble. Uh, so further afield in North Africa, Rommel is making great gains against the British. He's actually doing very well. Holy shit. Rommel's taken Benghazi and Libya. Uh, British troops are trying to hold Esmara. So that was on the 4th. What's the date now? Sorry. Uh, so it's currently April the 19th. So that was the 4th. Um, so on the 6th of April, forces of Germany, Hungary and Italy are moving through Romania, initiating the invasions of Yugoslavia and Greece. On the 6th, the Italian army is completely driven out from Ethiopia. No, sorry. From Addis uh, Ad Ababa. Ababa in Ethiopia. Sorry, not probably not pronoun pronouncing that properly. Uh, the Germans take uh, Salon Salonika in Greece. Uh, what else is happening? Though still a neutral nation, on the 11th of this month, the United States begins sea patrols in the North Atlantic. Okay. Uh, Rommel, on the 14th, has attacked Tobruk, uh, but is forced to turn back. Other attacks, also failures, occur on the 16th and the 30th of this month. On the 15th, British destroyers intercept an Africa Corps convoy and sink all five transports and the three covering Italian destroyers. That's good. Well, for the Allies. Um, on the 18th, Greek Prime Minister Alexandros uh, Korizis commits suicide. The British plan uh, the major evacuation of Greece. Okay. I think Churchill is extremely keen to protect the Greek government. Yeah, so Greek government is evacuated to Crete, uh, to Crete, uh, Crete and Churchill is uh, determined to defend them. Okay. Right, so as for right now, though, here we are, April 19th. Today, London suffers one of the heaviest air raids of the entire war. St. Paul's Cathedral is mildly damaged but remains closed. Other Wren churches are heavily damaged or destroyed. But soon the air raiding will stop. Why? Because Hitler will have much bigger concerns than Little Britain. Not the TV show. Uh, Britain. Uh, 
uh, because soon he's going to begin his invasion of the Soviet Union. Uh, so yes, all resources are going to be needed over there. So just hang in there, Britain. Hang in there. It's almost over. You're almost over the worst of it. And soon, America, so later this mu later this year, America will join formally. So, hmm. Okay. Thank you, Oxidox and Lurzy. Thank you. Okay, so as for right now, though, we're not going to spend too long out in this patrol. In fact, we're going to turn back and get back home by the end of the month in the hopes that we can join the Bismarck as she makes her breakout in her famous uh, thing. So, what's going on? On the surface, it's a beautiful clear day, which is terrible for us. Holy shit. Because we're a U-boat just off the coast of the United Kingdom, and uh, the RAF are going to be sweeping around looking for us, along with surface patrols. So we need to stay the fuck underwater for the daylight hours. So let's do that. There's a sound contact over there. A warship closing, bearing 053. Let's evade that one. Right, sorry, my keyboard is a bit knackered. All right. So, we're just going to cruise at one knot under the water here. Okay, warship moving away. So, it's still the mid-afternoon. So, we can't really do anything in these conditions. We need to wait for the cover of darkness. Okay, warship detected. It's down by medium speed and closing. Bearing 355 directly in front of us. So, it's currently... Let me just get a mark on its course. What's it doing? Okay, it's moving that way. Alright, so yes, this area, as you can see, is quite well patrolled. Also, it's quite shallow, so if we do get caught, we will probably have our pants down. We won't be able to effectively dive beyond their depth charge effectiveness, so, mm-hmm. Thank you, um, Just Nuggets. Thank you very much, sir. Mm. So, just slow and steady right now. It's now four in the afternoon on April the 19th, 1941. Let's just turn the U-boat slightly this way. Six in the evening. Seven in the evening. Enemy convoy, grid AM, nine, seven. Stand by. That's there, isn't it? So that was the one going into Swansea. Uh, it would be nice to go for, but we'll never make it in time. Or rather, we'll be too close to the enemy coast. Thank you, Dory Gray. Thank you very much, Dory. So we're looking for single ships we might be able to catch out. Let's surface now then. Yes, sir. Bring the boat to the surface New and depth, go up to standard zero. speed. Meters. Chief engineer, our battery's on, he I says, two thirds, so we're going to need to recharge it on the surface. Here we go. Uh, not really, uh, jumbage, jumbage. Flight sims aren't really my type of thing. Uh, si likes them, though, surprisingly. He really likes them. I didn't expect that. <coughs> So much so that he set up a software development company uh, to develop flight sim stuff. So, mm. well, oh, well, best of luck to him. Ah. Okay. Right, so we're on the surface. Visibility is reduced, at least, although it's still quite bright. All right. Mm hmm. Oxygen reserves are back to three quarters, so it's now almost nine in the evening. So we're traveling much faster at 11 knots on the surface. Battery almost, well, three quarters recharged. Thank you, Chernobyl. Thank you very much. So looking at this, yeah, so heavy traffic in pretty much this whole area. So we may as well just begin sweep, begin a sweep. Uh, so let's just, uh, yeah, just start... Um, Going back and forth. So that's pretty much the whole night. Well, seven hours of it at the very least. Start cruising around. Uh, I'd rather not fat pingu. My software development days are, you know, wrapped up. Okay, ahead one third. Just, so ahead slow, sorry. Just to try and reduce the sound of our engine so the hydrophone operator can listen to things. Also, we're not in silent running, are we? Uh... Secure from silent running rig. F no, yeah, secure from. <coughs> okay. Is the U-boat repaired? Yes, we went all the way back to Saint Nazaire in occupied France and had the U-boat fully repaired. Okay. 
Hmm. Does the U-boat operator get paid? Uh, good question. Let's have a look. So... Uh, so, uh, Second World War, how much were they paid? What was life like for sailors during the Battle of the Atlantic? How much were U-boat sailors paid? So, submariners in the German, American and British navies received more pay than their surface counterparts. In the case of the Kriegsmarine, the base pay was similar to any other ordinary seaman, but the sailor received both the Tauschzulag, uh, diving pay, and a confined spaces allowance where the boat was at sea when the boat was at sea during operations. Hmm, okay. Uh, so the reason for the higher pay for submarine service was to attract to attract high quality volunteers and reward difficult service. But the higher pay scales also reflected the unique nature of the submarine service. Submarines were highly technical vessels and their small size meant their crews needed to have some degree of specialization in their training. There was little room on the Second World War submarine for extra bodies. Submarine crews often received training in specialist equipment such as sonars or torpedoes, which many navy uh, sorry, which with many navies meant an increase in salary. Hmm. Doesn't specify how much, it just says that yes, indeed, they are paid more than the regular Kriegsmarine. Cool. Uh, I can assure you though, no amount of pay would probably convince many <laughs> many uh uh, sailors to go on a U-boat towards the end of the war because your life expectancy was basically a few days at best. There we go. So I just necked my coffee there. Okay, so we're traveling a bit slow on the surface right now, but that's just because I want my um, hydrophone operator to be able to hear as clearly as possible. Thank you, Chaotic Blessing. Thank you, sir. It's about three in the morning right now. I best save it just in case the game has a spaz attack. Hmm. There we go. Uh, thank you, Chaotic. And Chernobyl and Dory Gray and Just Nugget and Oxydox. Thank you, all of you. Do I plan on playing Company of Heroes 3 when it comes out? Alas, I don't really make those sort of plans, Extra Bind. I just wait for a game to come out, and if it seems to be decent, then go for it. But I believe... Um, uh, company of Heroes completely... Well, Relic itself has gone down the shitter. Again, an another good example of a company uh, losing much of the... Uh, much of its main talent over time. For they continually just dumb down their products, dumb down, dumb down, again, 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 until... Well, the, it, well, the problem with Relic, or rather probably more accurately the problem with, with their publisher, is that they're continually chasing new markets and they're not hanging on to old ones. Prime example, Dawn of War. Uh, every entry in the Dawn of War franchise under Relic... Sorry, is it Relic? It is Relic, isn't it? Uh, was basically a, a completely different game. Hydrophone does not work on the surface. Yes, it does, Periwinkie. Yes, it does. Uh, they've been picking up sound contacts on the surface in the uh, rough rough seas. Granted, that was at only 7 kilometers, so perhaps we should go yes, under so to get the full advantage of 20 Periscope kilometers. Death. Okay. Yeah, we were picking up uh, from surface contact hydrophones in the storm off the coast of Africa. All right. Yeah, let's see what we can hear. And let's go down a little bit deeper as well, away from the surface. Yes, sir. Uh, push ahead. Three, five. Do this quickly. Ahead standard. Uh, but yes, effectively... Um, yeah, so with every entry in the Dawn of War series, they they went for a completely different game. They continually chased a new market every time, and it went about as well as you can expect. The first one was an RTS game, the second one was a real-time tactical game, I guess, where most of the base-building elements were kicked in the head. And the third one was a fucking MOPA! Um, yeah. Which is fine. You can do that. There's no problem with doing that. If you want to do different genres, hooray! But don't give them all the same name. Fans have certain expectations when you give something a name, notably that it's a sequel of the thing that you you know, that they enjoy. If it's just flat out not that, then don't do it. <coughs> okay. Current death three, 
So we're down to 30 meters. So at this depth, our hydrophone operator, and we'll, we'll switch off the engine in a minute, so he'll be, yeah, he'll be able to hear roughly this. So if any ships stumble in here, hooray. So let's yes, slow sir. down the engine. Ahead, slow. Uh, rightly so, Jadik. Um, yeah, they, they, they took what they liked and they made an MMO. Uh, MMO. Made a, um, a MOBA. Again, different strokes for different folks, Rock and Rocket. I personally hated Dawn of War 2, uh, for the aforementioned thing. It just wasn't Dawn of War. Still seemed good, but I went in there expecting an RTS, and I was given five guys with bolters shooting lots of incoming, um, you know, um, what's the term for it? Like, lots of mobs that you farm. <coughs> Trash? Yeah, basically. Oh, hello. We've got some uh, warship moving fast and closing. Okay. We're on 35 meters depth right about now. Uh, sorry, that's two warships, is it not? Patrol boats, maybe? They're moving very fast. They can't be anything big. Hmm. Just in case. Yeah, they are coming quite close. Are they moving fast? Should we have a quick peeky? Yes, sir. How far is that? Periscope depth. Eight kilometers. We able, yeah, we just... Go at the periscope depth for a second. Have a quick, uh... Have a quick gander. Because if it's like a fucking battle group or something coming through, we're like, bloop, torpedo in the side. Hee hee hee. Right, so as you can see, the hull of the U-boat is now rising. So we're just travelling forward two knots, and we're just adjusting the fins on the... Probably not the right word for them, but effectively fins on the front of the U-boat to swim up. Okay, this is my observation periscope. Tiny, tiny, tiny little thing. We're just going to have a peek. Okay. And they should be at roughly bearing 110. Yep. Oh, we're still 30 meters down anyway. Best, best lower it in the meantime. Rudders? Yeah. Are they still rudders at the front? I guess so. Dive plane, says Humor. Hmm. Yeah. Fins, fine. Here we go. Up to periscope depth. There we go. We've reached periscope depth. Let's just... Oh, that's the attack periscope. Oh, we received a new message from Submarine Command. Uh, right. Up to sea daisy. <coughs> hmm? Okay. No, still not quite there yet. A little bit higher, please. Where are they, eh? Where are they? Wonder what we're dealing with. Uh, they might be beyond our visual range, maybe. Following plotted course, so they're roughly bearing 100 ish. Again, our periscope is still too low, just on the edge of it, though. Bearing 100. Can we see anything? No, beyond visual range. Alright, let's uh, lower the periscope so we don't cause any uh, any seagulls to land on it. <coughs> and they'll be like, oh, over there. Right. What's the visual range? Uh, certainly more than 7 kilometers. Uh, so that's 5, well, sorry, 5 kilometers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they're about to pass in front of us. They are fast moving, whatever they are. Right, up we go. That's the attack periscope. Wrong one. We're travelling at two knots, nice and slow, so we should be alright. Right, what have we got? They're quite close. They should be right in front of us somewhere. Oh, hello. What are you? It's a motor torpedo boat. So it's, yeah, it's hunting us. Or hunting, yeah. A motor torpedo boat? Two of them, or...? Uh, yep, two motor torpedo boats. They're tiny, tiny little things. Let's have a look at them. So, yes, only 47 tons. Probably a crew of, say, 10, 15 men, maybe. Depending on whether or not they've, they've got big depth charge racks. Alright, <coughs> that's enough. My curiosity has been, uh, has been sated. Lower the periscope. What's the mission? Hunt uh, shipping around 
the Britain, basically. But it's just a, we're just doing a short patrol. Uh, nothing, nothing too extravagant because we want to go back to, yeah, we want to go back to the submarine pen soon, so to hopefully take part in the action with the Bismarck. Thank you, Timetra. Thank you very much, Timetra. There they go. They're bogging off. Bye. Have a lovely day. All right. Would be nice to resurface again just before day. Are they outside of visual range? Yeah, they're gone. Right, resurface quickly. <coughs> just uh, give the batteries a little extra oomph before we submerge for day. Hi there, 2K all. Welcome indeed. Indeed, yes, I ignored the mission to go to go off the coast of Africa because holy shit, that sucked. The weather was awful, we couldn't do anything. What was the message from Submarine Command? A British steamer sunk for 7,000 tons by U-73. Mm, nice. What was U-73? <coughs> U-73 was a Type 7B U-boat of the Nazi Kriegsmarine. She was laid down uh, in Germany at yard number one at uh, Vergsacker Werft. Okay. She carried out 15 patrols between early 1941 and late 1943, sinking eight ships and four warships. She was also damaged, sorry, she also damaged a further three commercial vessels. Uh, she was sunk by two US warships, the USS Woolsey and the Trip off the North African coast on the 16th of December 1943, lost with all hands. Hmm. Uh, just a wiki, Alex. Just quickly, quickly Google that vessel. Find out what happened to it. In well, because effectively the events in game reflect the actual war. So what's going on in the war? Uh, yes, the hood is in the game. I don't know where she is right now. If I had to have hazard a guess, I'd say she's probably at Scarpa Flow with the rest of the home fleet, because the Bismarck is going to try to make a dash out into the, the North Atlantic, and that's where I'd put her. That's where I'd put the hood. <coughs> Uh, hang on, the hydrophone operator has picked up something behind her. Is that just the old contact? Probably just the old contact. Right. We can't spend long on the surface, gentlemen. Okay, down we go. Yes, sir. Periscope deck. Yeah, probably rocking. Makes sense. <laughs> Thank you, Shadow Killer. Thank you very much, Shadow Killer. Alright, bring the boat down. Whee. Lovely jubbly. Um, so, yeah, just get a... Get yes, out to, yeah, 25 metres down. Just cruise New along. Two, five meters. So if, if we can find something tasty during the daylight hours, that would be fine. Oh, hello. Warship detected on the hydrophones. Uh, closing, bearing zero one zero, marking. Uh, it is indeed closing. Medium speed. What are we talking about here? Is it investigating us as a sighting or? Thank you, Bato. Thank you. Because hold up, that looks suspiciously like it's trying to move to our last projected location, isn't it? Hang on. Isn't it? See? Did we get spotted by something? Hmm? Let's go to periscope yes, depth. <coughs> Have a quick look. Periscope We're not depth. here to attack warships, but if there's a free one going. Bring us up to periscope. Give me one quick ping beneath the uh, keel. Yes, sir. Depth under keel is nine. Oh, that's not a lot of room. Holy shit. That's not a lot of room to maneuver. <sighs> Alright. Bring us up. There we go. Whatever it is, is getting closer. Uh, turn the vessel slightly, please. Actually, no, hold the course. Keep a nice small profile on the. Uh, against its. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Against its ASDIC, so it's early sonar. 
Okay, we yeah, we can do the periscope. Just have a quick sneak and peek. It should be roughly sound contact is at oh pretty much directly in front of us. We need to find the hotkey for the observation periscope, not the attack periscope. Just a quick sneaky peek. Sneaky peek. What are we talking about here? Mm, visibility is limited right now. Morning mist. Can't quite see it. Indeed, uh, ASDIC, so A-S-D-I-C. It is uh, an intentionally confusing code name to, uh, to ward off any intelligence leaks. Uh, it doesn't stand for anything. It just, well, it's supposed to, it's, it's like the word, I think the A-S part is an abbreviation of some sort of quartz crystal that the engineer, that the uh, inventor was using to get the sonar running. It's basically a sonar. It's just a very, very, very early sonar. Uh, someone can probably find uh, exactly what the code name abbreviation was. Hello, what are you? Ah, it's a trawler. <coughs> yes, it's a dedicated hunter. So it's an armed trawler. Not worth striking. Yeah, it's almost certainly coming for us then. Searching. In which case, let's uh, down, yes, sink down. Go Moving quiet. Eight, three meters. Nobody cough. Thank you, Heinzer boy. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Current speed one knots. Right. So there we go. Observation periscope dips down. We sink into the gloom. And then kill the engine entirely so it can't even hear us on the hydrophones. There we go. So we're down to 79 meters. Warship moving fast, closing. There's another one. Busy, eh? But we need to find some merchant ships. Not here to sink warships. We're not going to win the war sinking warships, which is a weird thing to say. Okay. Straight ahead. <clears throat> okay. Right. I just hope we can find something worth sinking. Where are we? There we are. Merchant moving fast, closing, bearing 330, long range. We have ourselves a target, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's give it a marker. Stand by. Let's try and predict its path. Get in the way of it, eh? Merchant moving fast. Closing. Very good. Uh, what's the range on that? So, let's pick up a bit of speed. Bring yes, us sir. up to one-third underwater, please. Bring us up to periscope depth, please. One -third. Periscope depth. Let's go. Thank you, um, Ad uh, Adam... And Thoris. Thank you very much, Adam. Sound contacts. Try and get an approximation of where it's travelling. There we go. Okay. So there we go. So connect the dots, draw a line. Like so. It looks like it's moving... Okay, that's its approximate course, roughly. Okay. <coughs> and how far away is that? That's uh, so our maximum engagement range is about twelve kilometers. All right. And how far do, how far away did we hear that? Uh, oh, that was twenty-seven kilometers. Okay, so our hydrophones are working excellently in these conditions. Good. Okay. Um, what about battery power? How are we doing? Yeah, still good. Okay. Let's move here. So that will take us an hour and 40 minutes to travel. I don't know what it means when it says fast. What does fast mean? Hang on. So fast is approximately... Um, is this fast? 7 to 12 knots? 
Okay. Meaning that it's going to travel between almost 13 kilometers and 22 kilometers, moving fast. So, its current position is going to be. What was that? What did I say? Between 12 and 17, I think. So either there, or an additional. So probably be around about there. Okay. <coughs> I think the last one's flank speed, is it not? I don't think it's travelling at flank speed. We'll see what happens, hang on. Okay, so we're trundling a oh shit, I forgot. I left my observation periscope up. Hold up. Uh yeah, it's down that. Let's not reveal ourselves until the last minute, eh? Uh Mutham, can can you not, sir? I I I asked you before. Please don't give me the exact position. Of the ship on the exact day. Come on. Let's just. Thank you, uh, Unreal Guardian. Thank you very much, Unreal Guardian. Alright, so we're sneaking in. So that's about nine kilometers. So, yeah, they're within our engagement range for a gas torpedo. Let's see what we're dealing with. What sort of target? Again, we'll give it a save, just in case I cock it all up. Save Hunt 1. Okay. <coughs> right. Uh, switch to the attack periscope. Up attack periscope. Uh, what was the bearing on that? According to this, the bearing to the, the merchant target is on roughly 313. Is it still beyond our visual range? Seems so. Thank you, Shadow Raptor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Sneak on in. Okay, up speed a little bit. Head standard, six knots. Then moving quite quickly. <clears throat> yeah, it's weird that it's not in a convoy. Maybe it is neutral. Uh, stand by. Can I get another? So three, two, five. Uh, not great visibility. It's all this mist. Thank you, bigger stickers. Thank you very much, and thank you, Shadow Raptor. Let's haul yes, ass full speed. It'll hear us on the hydrophones. But yeah, if it's faster, much faster than we are. How far is that? That's five kilometers. Surely we can see it at five kilometers. There we go. Small tanker. Excellent. Come down speed. Yes, <coughs> okay. Which first. nation? It's way too far to determine. I'm going to guess it's definitely enemy. Yes. A small tanker traveling not in a convoy. Isn't suspicious at all. Um, okay. Small tanker. Uh, that's a trawler. Sorry. I keep losing the lock. That's annoying. Small tanker. So tonnage 5,000. Draft 5.1. Length, oh, it's a long ship, 94.8 meters. Uh, small tank, it's not run by any... Okay, no, just merchant. Alright. Seems like a good enough target to me, wouldn't you say? Weapons officer, I'm going to need... A, an electric torpedo would be appropriate. Uh, so tube one, maximum range of only five kilometers mine, so... Ooh, we're just on the edge of it. <coughs> and it's currently six kilometers. Okay, close a bit more. Uh, thank you, Amaziax. Thank you very much, Amaziax. Then again, we're not attacking a convoy, so let's just use a gas torpedo. Small tanker moving east, medium speed. If it's alone, why not get closer? Yeah, we're trying, but it's just moving damn quick. It's hauling ass. Hmm. Why not use the deck gun? I'm worried that the RAF are going to be all over us, and it might well be armed. <clears throat> then again, I mean... 
Well, they well, they, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to get here to stop us. Fuck it. Let's just. Nah, I don't know. It's a choice. Gas torpedo fast, electric torpedo slow, or try to get them with the deck gun and hope they're not armed, and also hope that we can get away from before backup arrives. <clears throat> yeah, let's let's stay safe. We'll use a gas torpedo. Okay. So just wait until we get a bit closer. So how long until we can cover the distance, mind? So five kilometers. There's still six kilometers. We only need to get here. Okay. Yeah, very difficult visibility. Hmm. <coughs> Hi there, Mr. Epsilon. Welcome indeed. Well, I got in the mood. I got in the mood for more. Okay. I just keep closing. Just going to lower the periscope just a teensy bit. Just in case any of its, any of its spotters get lucky and see the trail. Right, um, let's speed up the time just an eensy weensy bit. There it is. Oh, I hope it's not doing evasive maneuvers. <clears throat> okay, there it is. Small tank, it's almost within maximum engagement range. It's a bit obvious, isn't it? Almost. Again, it keeps losing the lock, and I don't know why. Just hold the lock. Yeah, see? Lost. Weird. There's a flag. There is a flag. It almost looks American. No, the Americans wouldn't be ballsy enough. <coughs> okay. Press L to lock. Is that an American flag? Okay, it's locked now. It's within engagement range. All right, let's do it then. Um, so, if it's draft, ri so it's draft underneath. Yeah, so underneath the waterline, five point one meters. So, weapons officer, <coughs> give me tube one, electric torpedo. Um, we The only option is slow. Okay, give me 5.1, so give me six magnetic, <coughs> single tube only. Right. Open tube one. Tube one is open, torpedo is ready. Fire torpedo. Torpedo in the water. Periscope down. Torpedo is away. Where is it? Hang on a second. Ooh, we are very shallow here, blimey. So torpedo is now heading that way. There she is. Electric torpedo. A very temperamental thing, this torpedo. But no gas bubbles behind it, so we hey. Okay. Yes, sir. Slow speed. Thank you, Cabal. Thank you very much, Cabal. Okay, so according to this, uh, yeah, let's get men into the bow torpedo room to start uh, loading, loading that torpedo tube. <coughs> uh, how long will they take? Weapons officer reports that they will take uh, about 12 minutes to load the next torpedo from the reserve rack. All right then. And insofar as time to impact, uh, what is that? Uh, do 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 do. So it looks like about, what is that? Another five minutes or so, I think? Okay. Speed up the time. Let's see what happens, eh? Uh, right. Give me the observation. Whoops. No, don't go to my bed. <laughs> yeah. Job done. Go to bed. <coughs> observation. Observation periscope going up.
Right. Stand by. We've still got another couple of minutes till impact. No, I'm sure it's not neutral, even though it's clearly not travelling in a convoy, so it doesn't feel the need to, even though its flag might not be British. I'm sure it's fine. Hello there, Quebec. ZF Quebec is in the chat, everyone. If you're interested, he is similarly playing U-Boat, I believe it's called. Uh, and probably not right now, but he was earlier, so you can have a look at his VODs. So if, if you like what you're seeing, you can probably find more there. Uh, just with a, an accent that's not quite as eloquent as mine. Yes, fuck you. I'm going there. Okay. Speed up the time, just an eensy weensy bit. Here we go. So... 30 seconds until torpedo impact. Hopefully. <coughs> Let's see what happens, eh? Mm hmm. Th uh, 15, sorry. 15 seconds? 15 seconds. Four, three, two, one. Impacts. Damn. Oh, yes, direct hit. Direct hit amidship. Impact, everybody. Magnetic trigger. So, yeah, the device detected the difference in, in magnetic field between, well, on its default, effectively. There we go. Let's see what we've hit, eh? Oh, that's a big explosion. Now, this is not a neutral ship. Come on, say it with me. This is totally... A, don't be neutral... <laughs> oh shit! Shit, shit, shit! Shit on toast! Oh, come off it! You can't. No, bog off! You can't be sailing into a war zone under that flag! Piss. Well, they're fine, as you can see. They clearly survived. We're not in trouble. We're not going to get a bollocking from the Fuhrer. Lulu, you didn't, you didn't see anything. Yes. <laughs> no. Right. Um, bugger, 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 bugger. So they won't enter the war for several months. So yeah. Well, they'll probably be entering the war early. Ah, oh, shit. Okay, so our next patrol, not good then. Well, this patrol, not good. And they're almost certainly going to report our current position, so let's start skulking away, eh? Uh, lower the uh, periscope. <coughs> um, whoop, wait, there we go. This thing, <laughs> do you want to kill the survivors? Get rid of the evidence? No. Shit. Right, so moving away from the scene of the crime. Okay, warship, medium speed, closing. Uh-oh. Are they heading our way? See, they made it. They're fine, see? Warship, medium speed, constant distance. Our battery's still okay. It's still the morning, though. We best be careful. Right. Keep searching for shipping. Also, just go that way too. So, what's the date? Uh, April the 20th. So, we need to think about heading home fairly soon. Alright. What's that? Sorry. A merchant. Medium speed. Is that a merchant? Uh, stand by. Merchant. Medium speed. Closing bearing 252. Hello? Or is that just the same one? No, closing. Closing merchant? For real? <clears throat> is there another neutral ship that we can attack? Uh, you know, totally not neutral ship. <clears throat> What's this then? That wasn't a good marker. Try again. <coughs> uh, roughly, its course is something like that. Okay. That's close as well. 
What are we dealing with here, eh? No, it's moving a bit further away, but keep moving. What's the range on that? About five... No, sorry, that's degrees. Nine kilometres. It looks like it's... The course is roughly that, isn't it? <clears throat> Pick up a bit of speed. Ahead one third. Check our battery. Ahead standard. Okay. Uh, stand by. Walter, what do you hear? Hang on. Hmm. Sounds small. You hear that? Hang on. You hear that? That's a that's a that's a small propeller. It does sound like a warship. It's a small merchant or a warship. It's probably a fishing boat or something. Because the big ships are like shonk, shonk, shonk. Like, that's like. Dee -dee 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 -dee. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. Could just be like a shitty little fishing boat, in which case it's not worth revealing our position. Um, let's get closer and see what we can see, eh? Go around about there. How far away is that? Five kilometers. That should be within visual range. Observation periscope, please. So yes, anyway, for the people just joining the stream, we are off the coast of Ireland hunting shipping. So shipping coming into the British Isle British Isles as part of the Battle of the Atlantic. What is it? That does look tiny. Oh, it's a large tugboat. Not worth it. Is it armed though? Uh, armament. I see no guns. We could just hit it with the deck gun. But again, I'm worried about going for piss poor targets and just getting the RAF on our ass. <coughs> but it won't take long to sink it, if it is. Fuck it. We're bloodthirsty. Let's do it. Alright. I just hope it's, hope it's not armed. Bring us to the surface. Yes, Get Carl on the gun. Order him to sink it. Zero meters. There we go. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Let's go. Boat is raising. Get this observation periscope down. <coughs> All right, there we go. Get, get us up on the. Where's my officer of the watch? Get him out of the torpedo room. Okay. Whoop. Officer of the what? Uh, officer of the watch. Uh, can you please get crew on deck? Tell Carl to man the deck gun. Hang on. Yes, sir. Man the deck gun. Carl specifically, please. Where is he? Eugene. Um, where is Carl? Conrad. Yet yeah, Conrad as well. Herman. No, uh, not Herman. Jacob. Eric. Max, where is Carl? Where is Carl? There he is. Carl, you're the man. Get on that gun. <coughs> Alright. Uh, there they are. Quickly, let's head over to them and see what they are. Uh, so, large tugboat spotted. Can we see a flag? There's my binoculars. Large tugboat, large tugboat. Give me a flag. It looks red. We could be in luck, folks. Don't look at me, look for the enemy. Okay, we've got crewmen mounted on the gun up front. <coughs> Thank you, too many damn ducks. Thank you very much, too many. Uh, in fact, while we're here, can we get some men on the flat gun as well? Uh, so crew... Man both the deck yes, gun sir. and the flat gun. We don't want to get off to get surprised. Man the flat guns. There we go. So Eugene's on that gun. Good. Carl's still on the main gun. Nice. Okay. Um, orders for the deck gun, I guess. Um, you're free to fire. Uh, so aim for command deck, aim for weapons, aim for water line. Yes, sir. You're free to fire. Do I need to mark the target? Uh, 
Uh, oh, there we go. <coughs> so I presume it's enemy, because if it's not, then it's Carl's fault. There we go. Carl's firing. Good, good. That's a bit loud. Uh, hang on. See if he lands any hits. So, the Type 7 German submarine, which is the one that we're in now. Armament. Let's have a look then. So, a so times one, 8.8 .8 centimeter uh, SKC-35 naval gun with about 220 rounds. So this was a German naval gun used during the Second World War. So the 8.8 centimeter uh, SK gun weighed about 776 kilograms and had an overall length of 3.9 meters with a vertical sliding block breech. The gun fired 9.5 kilogram projectiles, about 88 millimeters in diameter, and the barrel is sometimes described as 45 caliber. A 2.82 kilogram propellant charge produced muzzle velocity of 700 meters per second with a nose-fused high-explosive and high-explosive incendiary projectile with or without tracers. The usual life expectancy was around uh, 12,000 effective charges, so I assume put shots. What is he shooting at? Oh, are they shooting back? Looks like they might be armed. Yes, sir. All stop. They've got some sort of machine gun. So they don't have a jet gun, but they do have an MG. All right. Let's not get too close, eh? Carl, you need to be landing hit, sir. Direct hit. Well done. So we're going to present a very small target for them. If they get too close, we'll just go under. How fast are they moving? Eight knots. Eh, we can beat, we can beat them if needs be. Okay. I think right now they're just trying to rattle us. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, what's this, sorry? So, incendiary ammunition, uh, 12,000 shots. So, it was the standard deck gun mounted on the conning tower. Sorry, in front of the, of the conning tower on the Type 7 U-boat. Oh, nice hit. Lovely. Uh, so, it was designed for the prototype 7A boat of 1935 with a nominal ammunition allowance of 220 rounds. During the early war years, these guns were used to encourage the surrender of independently routed merchant ships or sink ships damaged by torpedoes. Some of these guns were later removed from U-boats for mounting aboard minesweepers and submarine chasers after unshielded deck guns proved impractical in action against defensively equipped merchant ships and escort convoys. Hmm. Carl, what the fuck, dude? Were you even aiming? Okay, give me a standard reverse. They are, gr they are starting to approach on us here. Direct hit on the tail, well done. Get a good look. Whee. Can you fire it yourself? Yes, you can. I can fire it myself. Oh yes, they are definitely merchant marine. Come on, Carl. <clears throat> Captain standing proud there. I'll take a few shots myself. Uh, yes, no, sir. hold rudder. rudder. Hold so rudder. Degrees yeah. to port. Degrees to port. Rudder one. Degrees to port. Rudder amidship. Ooh, that hit. Okay, hold up. They're hitting us now. Okay, hold up. What's the button? Um... Hull damage, sir. Hull damage, copy that. Stand by. We're taking damage, sir. What's the range on them? I need a range. Range to target is about two kilometers. Direct hit, well done, Carl. Two kilometers set. Fire. There we go. Direct hit, there we go. Might just want to do this myself for a couple of minutes. <clears throat> Another direct hit. Come on. 
third direct hit. Well done, Carl. She's going down. Good shooting, Carl. Enemy target destroyed. What sort of damage are we talking? Um, yay! Yeah. yay. <laughs> there it is, folks. Woo! There's Carl. Well done. <laughs> okay, well, we destroyed a, t a tugboat. Hooray? Yes, sir. Yeah, we best get out of here. The RAF are probably going to buzz us. We've definitely, our position's definitely been reported. Right, um, yeah. Take the submarine down then. Yes, sir. New deck. Two, six. Uh, take the submarine down and start moving. Uh, yeah, just return to our, pr our prior course. Return to course to hit one third. Uh, Kate and Herman. Where's Herman? Herman, fucking Herman. No, where am I? Oh, what part of the ship is this? Ah, it's the meat part. The meat and the bananas part. Good, good. Uh, I see. No, I... Where's my quarters? Here it is. Um, Herman, um, wait, what's your name? Forgotten your name. Um, can you go uh, send a report, please, back to high command? Uh, report contacts. Oh, wait, we've just gone under. I can't do that. Do that later. Okay. Bloody hell. Current depth one, zero. What was that? Was that a depth charge? That was weird. Maybe it hit the ground and explo uh, hit the uh, the sand and exploded? Must have done. Sorry, was it Herman? Who's my radio operator? Uh Berthold, I'm sorry. It's Walter on the sonar and Berthold on the um, on the on the radio. Yeah, tugboat must have blown up, but it sounded like a depth charge. Hmm. Current depth two zero. Okay. Anyway, for the people just joining the stream, I hope you're okay. Uh, we're currently trying to attack Allied shipping um, just for a few days off the coast of Great Britain, and then we're going to return to Saint Nazaire and try and join the uh, the action against the Bismarck, or rather, to help the Bismarck. Okay. Yeah, let's clear out of here before the RAF starts sending planes to have a look. What's the date today? So April the 20th. What's going on in the Second World War on April the 20th? So uh, yesterday, <coughs> yesterday, London suffers one of the heaviest raids of the war. Uh, tomorrow on the 21st, with their retreat cut off by the American advance, 223,000 Greek soldiers of the Greek army in Albania surrender. Oh dear. Uh, also, the day after, on the 22nd, the British, both military and civilian, begin to evacuate Greece. On the 23rd, the Greek government is evacuated to Crete, which Churchill is de determined to defend. Hmm. So things are indeed heating up in the Mediterranean. <coughs> okay. Do, 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 do. So how's my battery? Uh, not great. Let's come down a little bit. Oh no, wait. It's almost the evening. We can yeah, we can recharge it. Did I say American advance? Sorry. Uh, it's the uh, Albania. It's in Albania. The German advance in Albania. Okay. Well, one little tugboat is not going to win us the war. Alrighty then. Uh, so let's come to the surface. And travel ahead one third, in fact, the head standard. Keep searching for some shipping targets, please. But mostly recharge the battery. There we go. So, diesel engine is enabled. Get our officer of the watch. We'll be heading back home. Yeah, how long would it take us to head home? <coughs> so, full journey home will take us when? How long? Uh, okay, a couple of days. I mean, assuming we can stay on the surface. We got time. We got time. Right, how's the battery? After that, I want to get under the water again. Oh, enemy large convoy. Grid, BF-15. Is that back at Swansea? No, stand by, everybody. Interesting. When was that report? 
That was very recent. That's eight minutes ago, everybody. We have a convoy sighting. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. And other exclamations. Um, right, marking you. Marker. That's not a very good marker. <clears throat> okay, so moving. <clears throat> Seven knots, everyone. East, northeast. Hang on. Let's have a look. So east, northeast. It's so it's moving at uh, six, seven point five degrees. So let's have a look at it. Yep. So from this marker up here, that's its current six, seven. <coughs> There we go. Okay. Right, so that's its approximate course. And it said it was moving at seven knots. Let's start heading in that direction promptly. There we go. Uh, okay, and then have a quick look at the convoy map in relation to it. So it's just off that tail bit of... Okay, so it's probably having... Yeah, hmm, well, we're not sure exactly which direction it's going to go in yet. Sorry, I think my voice is failing. Hang on. Yes, good idea. <clears throat> we'll send our radio report to the Kriegsmarine. Um, one minute, sorry. <coughs> uh, uh, Berthold, um, uh, report, please. Uh, send contact report. Yes, sir. Contact and send the patrol report. report. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so what was that? Seven knots, right? So radio contact reports. Large convoy. BF-15. East North. <coughs> oh fuck me! <coughs> Sorry. Uh, seven knots. Oops, that's not it. <coughs> <coughs> seven knots. <coughs> okay. So, how long will it take me? Uh, so I can travel on the surface for much of the night. That's good. <coughs> so one minute zone. So how long will it take me to get into that approximate area? So four hours of travel, which we can do on the surface. Okay. Uh, so in that time, in about four hours, moving at seven knots, they would have travelled approximately 51-ish uh, kilometres, assuming that they hold this heading, which means... I said 51, right? They'd be probably round about there-ish? Okay. Okay. <coughs> Nice. All right, so let's head on, head on in. Let's give it a save. And just call it uh, Convoy One. Um, right. Yeah. Anyway, how's everyone doing? You all okay? For those just joining the chat, I suppose I've already asked the question at the beginning. Uh, Bismarck on its way. So the Bismarck is currently milling around over here, um, basically without much little to do because the weather's not good enough for it to make a run for the Atlantic yet. Mr. Watermars is good. Energetic bum is chilling. Hi there, Ener Energetic. <clears throat> uh, sipping wine. Ooh, nice, Keegan. I do have some booze. Maybe I should start. Laying in bed, says Ensbens. Hmm, comfy. Okay. Right, so it's going to start getting lighter soon. Uh, now, what sort of what sort of depths are we talking about here? <coughs> okay, so we've got 129 meters beneath the keel. Okay, still 20 minutes until we arrive at the rendezvous. All right. So, the hydrophone. So, how far is that? That's we might be able to clip them on the hydrophones. <coughs> okay. So let's just uh, slink under the waves, go down to yes, periscope sir. depth, yes, and just head depth. that way just a little bit. Right. Okay then, so, Walter, you're up mate. They should be 
If we can hear them, they'll be at bearing 310. <coughs> oh, I'm lying in bed. Whoops. Oh, is that not... Oh, hello. Current depth, one, zero. Hang on. Hello. Hello, hello. We have propellers. Bearing 318. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. We hear something, folks. We could be in their path. All right. Very good. Yes, Reduce sir. speed. Check battery. No Conditions are excellent as well. Lovely and calm. Are the torpedoes loaded? Weapons officer? Yes. Although, sadly, we have mostly gas, uh, gas torpedoes in Contact. the front. Warship. Constant distance. Bearing. Three, one, two. Long range. Three, one, two. Long range. That's probably the front leading element of the convoy. Okay. Alrighty then. Um, so, that, this is great. Holy shit. So, let's see if we can uh, sit in their path, eh? Start moving that way. Where are they? Right, come this way. Slow, 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 slow. Let's not push our luck here. All right. <clears throat> um, we've lost them on the hydrophones. Why is that? Uh, Walter? Fuck, I've done it again. I can hear them. 330. They're at 330. Which is there. Okay. Slow and steady. All right then. Uh, let's come to a complete stop. Yes, Just wait and see what they do, eh? All stop. Okay, all stop. This is about three in the morning. Uh, Walter, uh, Walt, you should be able to hear them, sir. Could I get a report, please? I need to know where they are. Come yes, up sir. slow. Ahead slow. <clears throat> Why is he not giving me a report? Can we go a bit deeper? New depth, 30 meters. This, you should be able to hear them. That we heard them. We know they're there. There's something wrong with the. Something wrong with the hydrophone. Uh. Where's the hydrophone mounted? I think it's fine, isn't it? Whoops. <clears throat> Thank you, Ajara. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, are you tired, Walter? Do you want a break? <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> okay, hang on. Oh shit, I hope we haven't lost them. Have we gone too far maybe? From their expected course? Come on, yeah, bring the bring the U boat around. Thank you, uh, Rickis. Thank you very much, Rickis.
What do you reckon? They were here, we heard them. Thank you, attrition. Unless maybe they've... <clears throat> they wouldn't change course that massively unless they suddenly went hard east and they're further this way. Keep listening carefully. Nah, they wouldn't stop. I don't understand. We've been doing this for hours. No, no sign of them. <clears throat> when was that contact report? <coughs> Sorry. Okay. It was ten. All right. Did we lose them? Fuck! I don't know. How far can they travel in eight hours at seven knots? Eight hours, seven knots, a hundred kilometers from their last known position, which was there. So they can be anywhere within that circle. Oops. Right. And yet our detection range for our hydrophones is approximately that. So maybe they did. Maybe maybe they pulled hard east. Like yeah. A change of course, and now they're far away because we went off north expecting them to continue. Right, so let's fucking haul this way. Maybe they're like here right now. It's going to get tricky now because it's daylight. I was hoping to do a night attack. How's our battery power? Oh, it's okay for now. Up speed a little bit. Go to one third. So it's now six in the morning. Maybe they slowed down? Maybe they're way... Maybe they slowed down when they entered the shallows? But why would they? They'd just book it straight to the port. They know that this is U-boat country. <coughs> or maybe they... Is there a convoy route that goes around the other side of Ireland? Hang on. There it is. No, no, no. We should have found them. Unless maybe that contact that we had had nothing to do with the convoy. Maybe that was just some random warship. I find myself perplexed. <laughs> Keep searching. It's about eight in the morning. Reduce speed, both to save battery power and so we can listen carefully on the hydrophones. Yeah, so now it's afternoon of that day. About to be nightfall again. They must indeed be long gone. I don't understand how they slipped past us. Unless, yeah, th unless they just hit east immediately and then just bombed it past us while we were dicking around going north. <clears throat> Maybe? They indeed pulled a sneaky on us, everyone. Right, we can should be able to resurface the boat in it well, in a moment. Is there some malfunction with our No, hydrophone is fully functional. It didn't take a bullet it, yeah, it didn't get hit by a bullet or something. Thank you, Curry. Alright. Surface the boat, take us up, to head standard. How frustrating. Okay. 
So... What's my choice now? Do I just book it that way and just guess? Thank you, Hidden Cheshire Cat. Thank you very much. I guess so. Let's just, uh... Let's haul ass this way and, I don't know, just see if we get lucky? We'll periodically go underwater and listen for propellers, of course. Okay, let's go. So ahead, ahead full on the surface. So right now, message radio message received. <clears throat> uh, so that's just a different U-boat, U-107, reporting that they sunk a 10,300 ton steamer. Sunk with two torpedoes. Okay, so we're on the surface, moving at 11 knots, under the cover of darkness. Hmm. Batteries recharged to 75%. Hello, right, they did sneak past us. Wow, I don't know how they did it. I <laughs> can't explain. Okay. Um, right, so what was that... So, um, that was about, what, 20 minutes ago-ish. Large convoy, moving slow. Okay, radio contact report. So, they're still moving at seven knots. East, northeast. They didn't change their course. I, I have no explanation. If that's true, then they just activated a fucking stealth jet. We were literally there, everybody, weren't we? In their path. I can't explain. Did they teleport? Alright, I've, I've got no explanation. Uh, regardless, we at least know where we where they are now, so... Or at least 20 minutes ago. <clears throat> so, large convoy, there, okay. So, travelling on the surface. We can only travel on the surface for a little while. It's going to take us 10 hours at this speed. Yes, Go sir. up to full speed. Uh, navigator, how much... Hey, what's our fuel reserve? Fuel's great, holy shit. Pull up yes, sir. all the way to Ahead flank flight. speed. Actually, no, we shouldn't push it. Ahead full. Yes, sir. Ahead okay. full. And then how lo how far yes, can we sir. travel at this? Not yet. Yeah, nine. You've got enough fuel to travel all the way across the damn Atlantic if we wanted to. Okay. So just bomb it. So in, in eleven hours we'll be here. So let's make it nine hours. Then how far is that between? Wait. F f do it properly. Figure out their exact course. Hang on. Hold up, so... Okay. East, northeast was 66 points, uh, point 0.5, yes? So, 66. Wrong thing, sorry. 66.5. Their exact course is... That. Right? Is that true? It doesn't seem correct. Hang on. Compass bearing, east, northeast... Um, sorry, 67.5. What did I say? Uh, 67.5. Right, it's there. All right. <clears throat> Get rid of the old one. la dee da dee da All right, so in nine hours, we'll be here. At that point, we'll start to lose the cover of, yeah, the cover of night. So let's put it eight hours there, right? How far away is that? Still 19 kilometers. Can we get closer? Oops. Uh, hi there, uh, Tabonkers. Welcome indeed. Um, not too long, mind. Uh, I We'll see, we'll see. I'm quite absorbed at the minute. <coughs> um, right, so... Uh, it will take a seven... Right, eight hours. Call it eight hours. How far can they travel at seven knots in eight hours? Let's have a look. That's the one with minutes on it. That's the wrong one. So according to these calculations, they can move uh, 100 kilometres. So 100 kilometres along here, by the time... Right, they should be... Oh, fuck ass. Hmm. Okay. We're still trailing behind them. By how much behind them? Still out of engagement range will be 17 kilometers. And that's when we lose daylight. So we have to dive and therefore, um, yeah, we'll dive and they'll be faster than us and then we're screwed. <coughs> Shit. 
flank speed. We could push the engine's flank speed. Don't they take damage after a certain amount of time? And this is eight hours we're going to be travelling. I don't think we can do that with flank speed. Um, shit. Do I have my best people in the engine room? Yes, I do, but some of them are quite tired. If I swap them out with some people who are better, rest better rested, will that make the difference? Uh, one second, sorry. So we're making 13 knots right about now. Hmm. Helmsman, helmsman, torpedo man. Okay. Thank you, Nyet. Thank you very much, Nyet. Okay. We'll go up to flank speed then and hope for the best. So we're making 13 knots. What can we do on flank speed? Hmm. What's the name? Sorry, is it... Um, I might be misspeaking. Is it cavitation? It's when a propeller spins so fast that it starts to create uh, like air bubbles, which starts to erode away at a propeller. Is that true? I remember reading a long time ago. It's one of the complications of propellers' use. You've got to be aware of the fact that uh, over over spinning them will will cause them to start damaging themselves. Less cavitation if you're deeper, says uh, says Mr. Thou. Okay, Mr. Thou even. Oh, it happens in pumps as well. So yeah, we if we travel at this speed for that, yeah, we're probably going to fuck up the propellers. Okay, um, so, I mean, it's not much, we save half an hour. We're up to 14 knots, which is great. Ah, oh, shit, but then they'll still be there. That's the, that's the trouble. Out of engagement range. Oh. Fuck. How much time, how much time do I have? I've got eight hours... I've got eight hours, and then it's going to be too light, and then I'll just be spotted. We're going to try. We'll try, but I'm not holding my breath, everybody. I'm pretty sure this convoy is going to evade us. Convoy two. Right, so let's try. So speed up the time. Traveling at 14 knots on the surface at night. Here we go. Enemy task force. That's different, isn't it? That's not a convoy. There's something up there. Be like a battleship or something. There we go. So they're probably there ish. Right. Oh, we're on 18 knots. Holy shit. Holy shit. Is that a visual? What is that? Large convoy, speed slow. How far? That's not a visual contact, that's a radio report. That's still another 39 kilometers. Oh, we're in business, boys. We're in business. Uh, large convoy moving west, medium. Are these two separate convoys? Are you kidding? Have we just got an intelligence report on two completely different convoys? Oh my god. Target rich environment if we can make it. But again, we're losing the darkness. We're going to be easily spotted on the surface. Alright. So, large convoy moving east-northeast, this large convoy moving west, medium speed, that's slow speed. Hit the westbound convoy. Just need to get, yeah, get in front of one of them. So, assuming this is the westbound convoy, then they're going to be doing a... that path. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right. Oh, sorry, west, not east. Yep, yeah, sorry, you're right. Ah, okay, so that... Mm. A convoy's going west? Why is there a convoy going west? What's west? <laughs> there? Alright. Um, are they trying to sell stuff? <laughs> Go for the western convoy. Could do... Fuck. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe they're returning back to the US. Okay, right. Let's go for the western convoy then. 90 degrees, yeah, that way. Fuck, I keep doing that. Alright. 
Okay. Ah, bloody piss. Okay. Done. Right. And then, what was that? Enemy large convoy moving west speed, eight knots. Okay. And then, how long will it take me to get there at this speed? Oh, yeah. Okay, two hours we'll be in their path. <laughs> Almost exactly where we killed the tugboat. All right. Two hours will be in their approximate path. How far will they travel at eight knots in two hours? That's a clock. That's not the right sheet. That's also not the right sheet. Bloody piss. Fucking. Should have joined the damn Luftwaffe. They don't have to deal with bloody sheets. Um, right, eight knots, two hours, uh, about 30 kilometers. So their approximate position would be, and this is just an approximation, there. Which means that we will be within and get. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, bad news, daytime. So our, our, our attack periscope will be spottable. Spottable, easily spotted, and also shallow waters. So if the destroyers find us, uh, we could be caught with our pants very much down, the soap very much dropped, and uh, yes, <sighs> we could be in trouble is what I'm trying to say. Alright, let's do it then. Let's give it a save. So we're actually abandoning the first convoy and we're going to go for a second convoy. So, uh, this one is not bringing material, I assume, to Great Britain. It's going away. No, let's say it's selling something. What could Britain be selling in the, in the Second World War? <laughs> what are we selling? What possible good could we offer America at this time? Misery, bad teeth, tea? No, we're keeping the tea. Now is a desperate time. We need tea more than ever, right about now. The Welsh. <laughs> yes, we're sending the Welsh. Radar, that's actually possible, yeah. So th things like radar technology, although we probably wouldn't ship radar, we'd just, you know, we'd send experts and then you build them yourself. <clears throat> Opium, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's still, yeah, still the East India T Trading Company, still going. Want some opium? No, stop it, dude, stop it. Seriously, it was really dodgy when we did it last time. Okay. Ah, no, no, that's actually a secret attack fleet in disguise, you see. It's going back to America. Perfect time. They'll never expect it. We're off to reclaim the colonies. They'll never... F yeah, in the middle of them helping us with our war effort, they'll never expect a second revolutionary war. Ah, uh ah. -uh. See? All part of the plan. Afterwards, Churchill, Hitler on the phone. Thank you, Hitler. Ah, oh, yes. A secret deal beneath the table. We got our colonies back. Yes. In exchange, Hitler, you can have pretty much whatever you want. <laughs> Take Europe. <laughs> He's like, okay. If you'll excuse me, says Mr. Hitler as he puts the phone down, I've just got to go deal with Russia. Oh, Jesus Christ! Russia's coming. Followed by another phone call a few minutes later from Berlin. It's simply, it's simply a voice on the, on the other side that says, Hi, I'm Stalin. Right. Okay, here we go then. So, I've saved two out a one hour and ten minute journey at flank speed. Yes, that's more or less the phrase. I, I think before that it was, hi, I'm Napoleon. After that it was, hi, I'm Stalin. They're generally the words you do not want to hear in any conversation or phone conversation or diplomatic meeting. Generally, just, yeah, a world that is Stalinless is a better world, I think. What a bastard. What was it? There was a famine in the Ukraine under his com uh, under his control? The Ukraine. Like, one of the greatest... One of the... Don't they export... Haven't they got, like, the, one of the highest exports for grain in the world? And there, there was a popular... There was a food crisis in the Ukraine. How shit at your job do you have to be? Okay, right, so we're still on the surface and it is getting brighter. If you're just joining the stream, our U-boat has detected a convoy moving west and we're trying to move into its path and we hope that they will be there. Um, now let's have a quick gander. What am I doing? What am I doing? There. 
So we might be able to get them if we just... Should we pop underwater briefly? Let's just pop underwater briefly. Let's not assume that they've maintained the course. Just very quickly, we're just going <clears> to... <throat> Indeed. Churchill was indeed a bit of a bastard urban decay. There's no sugar coating it. What an arsehole. At the same time, though, he was what we needed at this particular moment in history. Because let's just say the Prime Minister beforehand was shit. Really, really shit. Okay. Warship, is that the, is that the convoy then? Okay, how far away are we talking? Uh, still 23 kilometers. There we go. That must be the front and... Okay, we're in, we're in business then. Back up to the surface. Head standard. We still need to... Yeah, still need to cover the distance for our electric torpedoes. <coughs> okay. Now, sorry, I have a quick question before we do this. On the last stream, when I launched an electric torpedo slowly at the target, some people were quite able to actively guess how long it was going to take to strike the top. Sorry, just let me think about, think about my words here. Basically, you were able to very accurately guess when it was going to strike the target. How did you do that? You timed it very well, and I didn't. How were you able to determine? Were you looking at a number that I missed? Was it on here? I need to pay closer attention to this screen then. Is it this number? Is that what you looked at? Time to impact? In which case, if that's true, then I will look at the speed of the gas torpedo and then quickly try to figure out the difference. Speed of the torpedo divided by the distance. Yeah, but you guys didn't have access to that info, surely. Thank you, Dot Micro. Thank you. Oh. So there wasn't like, an, like a number that you could see on your screen that says time fired, uh, you know, since last torpedo. <clears throat> okay. Right, so we're traveling on the surface at... What's that? Okay, that's about 12 kilometers. How's visibility? Um, watch officer. Where is my bloody watch officer? Get up here. Dingus. Stop eating. Right. Um, could you tell me what the visibility is like? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Visibility is unlimited. So let's assume 12 kilometers-ish, right? So, we best be bloody careful. 22 kilometers, 20 kilometers. All right. Should we go under now? I think we should maybe go under now. Yeah, I'm going to trust my gut here. Periscope depth. And then, not just periscope depth, take us down to 25 meters. Give me a ping under the keel, please, navigations officer. 76 meters. Oh, that's... Oh, dear. That is ball-scrapingly close, everybody. That is properly... That's very shallow to engage a convoy. Uh, we could be in a lot of trouble if we get detected. Contact merchants closing. Bearing seven two. Long range. Contact merchants Very good. Bearing eight three. Long range. We found our convoy, everyone. Okay. Yes, sir. Keep Ahead it slow. slow. Take us down fairly low. Current depth two zero. Yeah, we'll give it another save. I really want to get some good convoy kills. Okay. <clears throat> Contact merchants closing. There they are. Seven, seven, long range. Ooh, beautiful. No, no, I read it, Martin. Um, I just was curious to know if, if one of you was going to say second screen on the right, third number down or something. Alright, so here we are folks, so we are cruising beneath the water at three knots. We're going to activate silent running now. So, initiate silent yes, running. Sir. Rig for silent running. Tell the crew to Contact not have any unnecessary conversations. 
Do not bang your knife and fork together really loudly. No singing. Thank you, Quebec. <laughs> Cunt. Thank you, the J Griffin. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, Quebec, I, again, I rather hope that you like the Divinity edit that I'm doing. It's, uh, you've got lots of jokes in there. Uh, my particular favourite is the one where we're all fucking around and you just pick up an item that you weren't supposed to and so you trigger an enormous fight against lots of mobs that we're not prepared for and so all of a sudden we're trapped in a room with lots of mobs and um, you just turn to us, you turn to the rest of your party in Divinity and you say, I can get us out of this and then you run over to the corner and you just go invisible. <laughs> uh. Contact, merchant. Closing, bearing, seven, four, long range. Thank you, Burning Eagle. Thank you very much, Burning Eagle. <laughs> sorry, spoilers, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's like that, that thing in Skyrim. I have important work to do, and then he just, the NPC just goes back to sleep. <laughs> okay. Looking good, everybody. We are properly... Okay, so just cut the engine, frankly. Cut the engine and wait right here. Alright. So, what sort of range are we talking? So, they're still quite far away. Just wait here. Hmm, are they turning this way? They might, in fact, be increasing the distance between us. So we're still at 24 meters down. That is a nice large convoy, isn't it? Warship is there. Need to keep my yeah. Keep, pay attention to the warships, like I didn't last time. <coughs> okay, so. 14 kilometers, so they're still on the edge of our engagement range. Yeah, they're moving a bit. Okay. So let's get ready. Let's bring ourselves up to periscope depth. Nice and quiet, okay? We're going to just take a quick, cheeky peek with the observation periscope. Right. Um, weapons officer. So I have four forward facing torpedoes, one electric, which I'll fire first. And then I'll follow up with the gas torpedoes, trying to go for the juiciest targets. We have a rear torpedo. Is it gas? It is gas. We should probably save that for a destroyer, just in case, because we are very shallow. I mean, we're shallow in the water. We're not, like, shallow as in, you know, fucking... Like, we super care about appearances, and we've all got... All, 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 uh, we've got lattes in our hands, and we care about the latest fashion trends, and, you know... <coughs> and it's a lovely hat you're wearing, by the way. 20 meters. Observation periscope. Oh. You alright, so oh, Jesus, Lulu, careful. Hang on. You alright? She's about to roll off the sofa. You're gonna roll off the sofa, honey. I'm just gonna shepherd you that way. You're gonna roll off. You're okay. That, that, that lady, I don't want you to hurt yourself. I know, I don't need to. Sorry, she was just stretching. I, th she was, I thought she was going to plummet to the ground. <laughs> oh dear. Not the smartest dog, that one. Okay. She's getting old, I know, yeah. She's five, five, five years old now. She doesn't quite have the youthful energy. She's a fat sausage. She's getting grumpier as well, sadly. She's getting a bit crabby. Like, she, she has lower patience when it comes to dogs get, getting in her face, which isn't good. I know, time flies, Illuminati. It's weird, isn't it? Fucking hell. Alright. Hmm. Visual range looks a bit reduced. Okay. If they are going that way, that's still quite some distance. Up speed, just a, a teensy bit. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, they looks like they are pulling that way a little bit, aren't they? They're not they're not heading directly west. Although, what's that? That's within five kilometers. Do we have a visual on it? Wrong periscope. There we go. Whoa, too high. Down, down, down. The observation periscope is smaller, but it's not it's not impossible to spot. Um, what sort of fuck? We still got no visibility? Uh should be on around fifty degrees ish. Fifty degrees. Can we see it? Oh hello, there they are. Passenger cargo, so that's seven, almost eight kilometers. Empire type freighter. Oh my god, this is beautiful, folks. Large merchant. These are some big targets, folks. Passenger cargo. That's a 2,200 ton. Uh, what is that there? Small merchant. Only 3,000 ish ton. <coughs> Whale factory ship. 11,507 tons. That is a prize. Big time. Hunt 1 class. Oh dear. Watch out. Nasty. Cruiser maybe? Not sure. <clears throat> Whale factory ship is a big one. Uh, Empire type freighter. Yep. Big. Large merchant. Seven. Yeah. We've got some great targets here. Passenger cargo. Right, let's get ready to pick some targets then, yeah? Empire type. So they're still not marked. Oh, no, wait, they're, yeah, they're starting to be marked. Uh-oh. Why is he coming about? Hunt one class. Presumably he'll move away momentarily. Okay, let's cut the engine then. Yes, sir. And just lower that Current periscope zero as it's looking at us. <clears throat> All right. Just a teensy bit, just in case. So kill the engine and just let them come to us. All right. So that's the current position of that warship. Indeed, if the front screen catches us, we're in trouble. All right. It's currently, yeah, so it's just sweeping, it's zigzagging back and forth. Thank you, Redhead Avenger. Thank you very much, Redhead. Okay, so about, so almost within engagement range. A couple more kilometers. Which means... Uh, uh, yeah, so a few minutes at best, really. Where's the other sheet? Lost it. Never mind, it's fine. Uh, let me just give it another save, because I'm being nervous now. Uh, there we go. Hunt one. <clears throat> thank you, Martin. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Martin. Indeed, yes. Well, our, our our front forward profile against that front warship is quite small at the minute. Thank you, S Bishop. Thank you very much, S Bishop. There we go. Right. There's the closest sound targets. Okay. Right. How close are we to the uh, to that destroyer? Three kilometers. Right. We should begin planning the first strike. Ooh. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Hello, you beauties. I'm still using the observation periscope. I hope we can still get away with it. Passenger cargo. Empire type. Okay. Large merchant. Okay. It bangs. Yeah. Whale. So yeah. Primary target. The whale factory ship. It's still 6.5 kilometers down periscope. Just give it a few more moments. Okay. Okay, so what about the whale? Are we firing two torpedoes at the right, at the whale factory ship or the one? Because if we have to fire two, then there'll be gas torpedoes. Um, I think hit mark the um, the observation periscope can't zoom as well. I think, and I thought that you couldn't attack with it, but evidently you can. Okay, give him a few more moments to creep on in. Go. Let's see how close now. 
Another, another quick cheeky peek. <clears throat> Two torpedoes, alright then. So, whale factory ship is almost within range. There we go. There's our periscope. I must not forget about that other one there. Looks like it's closing in on us. How... Six kilometers. This is going to be tight. Empire type freighter. Where's the whale factory ship? It's quite far away. It's quite deep into the convoy, isn't it? Uh -huh. Fuck. Okay. So, whale factory ship is... Am I waiting? Just wait a little bit longer. What about the other ones? They're definitely within range. Passenger cargo. It'd be a troop transport, wouldn't it? It's too small. Thank you, uh, Wobby. Thank you very much, Wobby. Empire type. Perfect target. Okay, I'm going to fire the electric torpedo at that bugger first. Actually, why, why go for the close? I should fire the electric torpedo further, shouldn't I? Ah, damn. It's a shame that the factory the factory one isn't closer. Don't forget the destroyer over there. It's coming right towards us. Thank you, Pumakil. Thank you very much, Pumakil. Don't ignore him either. Whale factory ship. Speed up the time just a little bit. It's now five in the morning on April the 22nd, 1941. It's almost within range. Uh, no way, Blue. These are armed convoys. I'll be torn to shreds. Give it a few more moments. <clears throat> okay, almost ready to fire. Okay, let's start planning our firing solution for this then. So, where is our target? One of these. Not entirely sure which one. So, uh, tubes please. Weapons officer. He tells me that I've got gas torpedoes in one to three and my electric in tube four. Okay. So, let's fire the electric first. Okay. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Am I firing just one? Fire. Just fire the fucking gas torpedoes at this bastard. Okay. So. Go for the first target. So. What's the bearing? Empire type freighter. Three kilometers. We'll fire tube four. Tube four electric torpedo. Okay, here we go. So. Give me tube four. Tube four. Slow moving only. Magnetic. Uh, what's the depth on the emp Empire type beneath the keel? It's uh, 6.9. There we go. Quickly. Wrong button. So magnetic. 6.9. There we go. Right. We're ready. <laughs> nice. And it will, yeah, hit in 2 minutes and 33 seconds. Okay, done it again. 2 minutes 33. Okay, get ready to fire. Open tube. 4. Did I misset the depth? Oops, I did. 6. Sorry. 6 set there. Thank you very much. It would have gone under the keel. Okay, initiating. 2 minutes 30. Firing to torpedo away quickly. Get to the other one. 230, 230. Where's that whale ship? Where's that whale ship? There you are. Lock. 230. 10 meter, 10 meter. There we go. Give me tubes 1 and 2 in a salvo. Magnetic. Medium. Give me 1 and 2 only. 1 and 2 only. Come on. 1 and 2 only. Fine, one and three only, it's fine. Magnetic, give me 10 meters just under on the draft. Medium speed, three minutes. What about fast speed? Shit. Even at fast speed, damn it. It's gonna maneuver in time. If 
Fuck, I've got to find now. Shit. Oh, shit. Okay, in which case, uh, wider spread. Wider spread. Give me three. Give me three tubes. Quick, we've got to do this now. Give me all three tubes. Open. Wider spread, because it's going to do evasive. Okay. Magnetic fast, magnetic fast. Check, check, check. Fire, fire, fire. Three torpedoes. Oops, I, no, I've minimized the game. Don't do that, don't do that. Fuck. Three torpedoes away. Periscope down. Okay. Thank you, Big V. Thank you very much, Big V. Periscope down. Come up yes, to sir, two knots. Speed, sink. Knots. Sink, sink, You're sink. Five, five so that's just high. The gas, yeah, has just highlighted our exact position to these destroyers. So start turning away. Slow and steady. Yes, start sir, turning away. Here we go. So, observe. Our exact position is easy to fucking triangulate just by looking at these. Uh-oh, something's wrong. Not all the torpedoes in the salvo were set to fast. An error on my part. Two are trailing behind slow. When I switched over the salvos to one, two, and three. Oh no, I've cocked up everybody. What about our first, our first torpedo though? Indeed, whoopsie daisy indeed. Where's our first torpedo? Well, it's electric, so you won't be able to tell. Uh, stand by. According to this, I'm guessing this is the first one that we fired. Impact should be in... Four, three, two, one. Damn. Torp oh! <laughs> electric torpedo. Direct hit the midship upon the Empire fr uh, Frigate. Uh, uh, sorry. Um, Damn! <laughs> Carl, yeah? The Empire Freighter there. So a large cargo vessel. Will it be enough to bring down the vessel, though? Okay, so they're aware that there's now a, uh, that there's a submarine hunting them, so all of them are now going to begin evasive action, which is why I fired this spread. Alas, it's probably going to fail horrendously because the torpedo... Two of them are trailing behind and one's streaming off like that. So, yeah. Pity. That was my target. An enormous whaling ship. Uh, I would reload the tubes, but we would have to come out of silent running. Um, Current depth two, zero. Are they coming about on us? Probably. Is it a whaling ship? What is it? Looks like a whaling. What is it? Yeah, that destroyer is going to come get us. Are we going to get lucky? Or is it just going to thread its way through? Uh, still some time for the slow ones. I suppose it's much harder to zigzag with something that massive. Oh no, sorry, all three of them have yet to actually arrive. Oh, I might get lucky. Okay, the first one's going to miss it by miles. Same with the second one, but the third one might actually strike. Okay. Right, there we go. So the first two were complete misses. So right now the crew are reporting our exact bearing for the DDs to come round on us. Here we go. Magnetic torpedo. Detecting the difference in magnetic field between the Earth and the... Yes! Direct it! A midship. Well, rear of the ship. Excellent. Shame it was just the one, though. Yay! One... Here, yeah, there's Carl again. Okay. Let's come around. Uh, let's actually go up a little bit. Yes, sir. Current speed one knots. And just try to pull. I just, I just want to get my rear facing that destroyer to minimize the chance current that it's going to pick us up. Three, um, come down to around yes, sir, 50 depth meters five, depth. Meters. Two's not bad. Let's see if uh, the ships start flooding to the point that maybe they fall behind on the convoy. Okay. A uh, reload, maybe. Again, I would, but we would have to come out of silent running, and we are currently only, uh, well, almost a kilometer, 
almost a kilometer from a destroyer. They're listening carefully with their hydrophones for any sound. So the sound of men winching and pulling chains and loading a torpedo is going to be quite obvious. All right. So not only that, but they are no doubt actively using their sonar, the ASDIC, so they're scanning, which is why we need to go deep. Now this one's going to find us, definitely. Fuck. Let's keep bringing the boat round slow and steady. Depth under keel. Give me a ping. Yes, sir. Depth under keel is 62 six, two. meters. We can go deeper. Keep moving. Yes, sir. New depth. Seven, six meters. Come on, let's go. Need to get lower. Ah, that's their ASDIC. That's their sonar. So we've got an active ping. So evading depth charges is now the name of the game. <clears throat> so the destroyer sees a blip on its screen, indicating that there's something metal. Something's bouncing a return. And so they're going to start moving over. So turn the boat, please. Turn the boat. Let's get moving. Use my rear torpedo. Uh, no. <laughs> no. An emergency situation that would be. Besides, what's the point? There's like four destroyers in this convoy. Yeah, and we're way too deep right now. We're 40 Contest meters. Four, zero. Why do submarines have red lights? So in the military, red lights are used because, well, for a few reasons. Uh, one of the ones is that they're a little, a little bit tougher to see at a distance if you're being look, if you're, they're searching for you. But the primary reason is that you can still operate equipment, you can still read documents, and uh, you don't have to adjust your eyes that much again to adapt to night, like nighttime conditions. So your night vision is mostly preserved. So for this reason, red lights are used around military installations so that men can quickly move between reading documents or scanning, well, night, using their night vision, effectively. It, it, in short, it, it, it's the quickest transition between your natural night vision and your ability to use equipment. Thank you, Geek. Thank you very much, Geek. Okay. So are we actually all right? Because we didn't get a second ASDIC ping, ping. We're down to 45 meters. It shouldn't be enough to confuse their sonar, their ASDIC. Check and see if my targets are taking water or stalling. We'll check momentarily. I can't really see clearly from here. Wow, we are probably in the thick of the convoy, aren't we? Wow. And the destroyers aren't really that close. You think we can get a quick cheeky rear torpedo? What is our rear torpedo? Um, yeah, we can't load it. It's a gas torpedo, so quick. Ooh, that would be super cheeky, wouldn't it? What's the closest target? Uh, uh three kilometers. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I think we should just focus on trying to preserve our lives, frankly. What if... So what's my plan here? Because if it, they're just going to sweep over me and find me, no doubt. If I turn sideways, either side, they'll probably pick me up immediately. I guess I've just got to wait until they go over me. Just go deep and then just wait until they go over me and hope they don't get me. Okay, so let's save it and speed up the time and see what happens. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Current depth, five, zero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you, Karu. Thank you very much. Uh, depth charges, Darrow. Depth charges or ramming. And later on, the forward-firing mortar known as the Hedgehog for the spines that, uh, that the ammunition racks presented when not loaded with ammo. Okay, speeding up the times. It's five in the morning, so we're just cruising at one knot at a depth of around... 60. Oh, hang on. Stand by. Stand by. We can hear a ship breaking up. Walter, what can you hear? What have you got, Walter? Warship. Merchants. 
Lots of propellers. Unknown. Can you hear the sound of metal breaking? Compartments flooding. We got a report of a kill. Indeed, we do have a kill. Something's been killed, folks. What's been killed then? Ah, <laughs> the Empire. The sink. Yeah, the flooding was too much. It's going down. Very good. So the rest of the convoy is having to take evasive action to, yeah, to not strike it. Yeah, <laughs> at least it's not neutral. <laughs> Let's have a quick cheeky gander. Oh, is that a tanker? That might just be a tanker. The one we did hit. This one here, right? Oh, they might have their flooding under control. Is that the one we definitely hit? Not sure. Can't tell. Hmm. Hopefully, maybe we can slow it and grab it when, uh, when it falls behind the rest of the convoy. Okay. So yeah, my f oh, hang on. The destroyer is actually turning. It's coming about. So maybe our exact position wasn't accurately determined. All right. So I'm going to be naughty. I'm going to be super naughty. And I'm going to do something that I really shouldn't. We're going to come out silent running. We're going to kill the engine. And the men are going to start reloading torpedoes. And if this gets me killed, then you, you, you have my permission to laugh at me. Here we go. Take us out of silent running. Yes, sir. No engine. Yes, sir. Current speed, zero knots. Okay. Get as many men as we can into the bow torpedo room and order them to start loading the next set of torpedoes. Don't we have a torpedo? Contact, merchant, closing, bearing. Get the weapons three, officer four, in there. There three, we go. Long range. So we're still quite close to an enemy destroyer. So right now, the men are using winches and... Uh, and, uh, well, muscle <laughs> pulleys, effectively, to lift these uh, torpedoes off racks or off the ceiling and then lie them down in, the, in a cradle, at which point they're pushed forward into the torpedo tubes, which are now empty. When ready, uh, when ready to fire, rather, the, the torpedo tubes are flooded. And, uh, yeah, they're clear and ready. Well, I'm sorry, I don't know if they're flooded just before firing or after loading, but regardless... The crews are making noise in the bow, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Wushulka. Thank you very much. Now, how long will... Uh, uh, weapons officer, give me a, an estimate. So, 11 minutes until the first torpedo is ready. Okay. Let's uh, speed up the time a little bit then. So, we're on 67 meters. 11 minutes of speed up time. So it's 26 minutes past 5 in the morning. Here we go. Torpedo. Oh, 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 oh. Have we been caught? I think we've been caught. <coughs> Where's more? Fuck. 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 Oh, okay. Hold on. The, the destroyer is going above us. I can see it, so, yeah. But it's not doing a... Oh, no, it is doing a depth charge run. But it's just missed. Okay. So we're on 72 meters, so it's as dick as confused. I didn't hear a ping. So it must just be going on the sound of the gentleman loading the torpedoes. All right. <laughs> First torpedoes ready. Right. Well, they're listening for us. Let's give them something to chase, eh? Head standard. Give me a ping beneath. Yes, sir. We've still got additional diving room. Take us down a bit further. Now let's start moving in amongst the convoy, eh? Contact, warship, moving away. Very three, three, six. So we're moving at five knots. The convoy is still a few kilometers from us just over here. 
We're going to try and move in amongst them. Alright. So we're now on 80 meters. We want to get as close to the seabed as possible to confuse their sonar. So what's happening right now, folks, is that the destroyers are trying to use their sonar to figure out roughly where we are, just by bouncing sound off and then getting whatever return they can find uh, from anything metal, anything, well, any, anything bouncing the signal back. But the deeper we go, the harder it is to use, as the differences in temperature between the different layers of seawater confuse the signal immensely. In addition, it's also limited by the fact that there's a certain range at which point the ping is instantaneous. So there is a minimum range, and it's a good it's a good few hundred meters. So if the destroyer gets more or less over us, we are invisible to them. It's within that time that we perform evasive maneuvers to try and evade their depth charges that they fling overboard. To counteract that action, there's many Hello? Stand by. I hear a possible run ahead of us? Where is that? Okay, he might be trying a depth charge run. Hard rudder right, hard rudder right. Sounds like he is. So to change our course. Where is he? Where is he? I can't quite see him. So currently we're 86 meters down in the gloom. Depth charges in the water, sir. They're depth charging, there we go. So we're trying to change our course right now to not get hit by those. So as mentioned, almost perfect timing in fact. So yes, we were in his dead zone. He wasn't sure exactly which way we were, we were moving. There we go. So I think he went that way and we're turning away from his depth charges. There he is. So we should be fine. Okay. We're still okay. We've got plenty of battery, plenty of fuel. Uh, gentlemen in the front, how are you doing with those torpedoes? Second torpedo will take nine minutes to load. Very good. Okay. So it's a game of cat and mouse, but I promise you we are not the cat. Although the convoy is the cheese. Okay, so come about. So the submarine is now turning in the direction of the convoy. Uh, let's also not crash into the wreck of that ship going down. Did it go down proper? Uh, there's the destroyer. What's that at the back? Could that be our whaling ship? No. Contact warship moving away. Very far zero medium. Range. It's a destroyer bringing up the rear. Oh dear. We might actually attract a lot of unwanted attention then. If we get three destroyers on us, we could be, we could be in proper trouble. Okay. <laughs> uh, give me another ping beneath the yes, keel. Depth under keel is uh, additional one. 11 meters to play with. It's not a lot, nevertheless. New depth, eight, eight meters. Take us down an additional two meters, if you can. Right, so the destroyer is coming back. Uh, so, yeah, try and line up almost exactly on its path. Here we go, that's its ASDIC, so it's pinging. It's trying to line up perfectly. So when destroyers do this, they often try to, even before the invention of the hedgehog, they try to perform a little buddy system in which they would try and, uh, try and run over the submarine in parallel lines in the hopes that uh, one depth charger would get them. Another particularly sneaky move that they like to pull um, would be effectively having one ship do the depth charge run and then another ship moving much, much slower. So the hydrophone operator aboard the U-boat wouldn't be able to detect exactly where, where they were. Especially because they were probably flinching away from their control console because they didn't want to get deafened by the sound of a fucking bomb blowing up. So that second ship, hard to detect, would run its own depth charge run. And hopefully get the ship. The most effective, or at least statistically speaking, the most effective use before the invention of the Hedgehog Mortar uh, was three destroyers working together. Uh, I believe it was actually the, the Americans later in the war that had the best luck, but to be fair, they came in later where the technology was a bit better. So, of course, their statistics are going to be higher. Alright. 
they could, yeah, they're closing on us. Right, could I get rudder just a right a little bit? Uh, Walter. Give me their exact bearing. Close it, bearing. Two, zero, four. 204, I need them on 180, please. I need them exactly on our tail so we can take evasive action. Right, the pings are getting closer. They get... Good. They're lining up for their depth charge run. Turn around the obs observation periscope so I can see their shadow. They're closing. 119. So note the pings are getting faster. The returns are getting closer together. Pretty soon it will be ineffective. Okay, hold rudder amidship. There we go. They're exactly where I want them to be. Looking on the surface. Turn around. You'll see that they're about to come... Oh no, not entirely. I thought they were doing a full straight line. In which case, rudder a little bit right, please. Okay. Uh, they stopped using their ASDIC. I doubt it's because they're within the minimum range. It's probably just a game mechanic to stop us being continually spammed. Because, you know, obviously that's what they would do. They just keep spamming the ASDIC. Isn't the surface view kind of cheating? A little bit better. But if you'll forgive me, the stream is a lot more interesting with the ability to show the audience what's happening. Okay. Indeed. So ASDIC. So it's a it's an acronym for a code name that's just made it's completely made up. So a bit of like most people try to say that it stands for like anti what is it? Like anti submarine detection, whatever. It doesn't. That was just made up. It's a made up story. Um, the British wanted to keep the fact that they were using Hello, hello, sorry. Sorry, observation periscope on bearing one eight zero. Can I see the shadow of the vessel? Basically, it's just a made-up um, acronym for a made-up code name to try and keep the exact purpose of the ASDIC a secret from German spies. And they succeeded. And as the technology was being developed, as I said this morning, um, it was handed over for free uh, with gratitude to the Americans, along with radar technology. And we promptly outfitted them aboard their ships. So when the Americans went into battle against the Japanese, they had radar and the Japanese had no idea what that was. You're very welcome and thank you. From Britain to America. Okay, they're making the depth charge run. Hard left on that rudder. Hard left on that rudder. A head full, a head flank. Give me a head flank. There it is. That's the, there's the shadow of their bow. The depth charges are going to be launched. So that, this is, yeah, we take the chance to turn now. Full turn, full turn, full turn. Here they go. Observe. Depth charges are being dropped from the back and probably also fired side to side if they have the launchers. Does this type of destroyer have the launchers? One moment. I don't know. Looks like a rear launch. Down they go. <coughs> okay. Continue turning that rudder. Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. Uh, sorry, don't fiddle with the depth, leave the depth. Rudder amidship, come down, standard. Okay, they're getting deeper with their charge. So, weapons officer, how are my torpedoes? Uh, so we've got another what, two minutes until the second torpedo is loaded. Uh, this convoy is getting away, but that doesn't mean we can't move ahead of them. It's about to be daylight anyway. Right, let's turn ab yeah, come about and try to break away from this. Uh, so the convoy's moved way too far away. I'll never be able to catch up with them. Okay, bring the U-boat around. Okay. Yeah, why are the lights white? 
Maybe they didn't switch over for silent running until now. <coughs> okay. Indeed, we killed two a backer. We killed a tug and we killed an Empire transport. And we also torpedoed a whaling ship, but we didn't sink it. But it might be wounded enough to fall behind the convoy. So we should keep our eyes open. Okay. So four knots we're moving at. Okay, never mind the loading of the additional torpedoes. We'll do that later. Let's focus on getting out. Bring us back up to silent running, please. Ring for silent running. And bring us down to two knots. Current speed, two knots. Uh, Walter, could I get a report on the warship's exact position? Thank you. Give me regular report on its exact position. Uh, moving away, bearing 101, short range. Very good. Continue bringing it about. So we want to present a very, very small... There we go. Rudder image ship. Rudder zero degrees to starboard. Okay. And give me one ping depth beneath the keel. Yes, sir. Hey. The keel is fine. Okay, we need to be very careful. We shouldn't go any deeper, otherwise we're going to start scraping against the bottom. Thank you, Ego. Thank you, Ego Danica. Periscope. Uh, can I get another report, please, Walter? He's somewhere over there. Well, he shouldn't be over there. Why is he over there? Is he on our tail, or is that the second destroyer? I'm just mishearing things. Who's that? Who's that? Sorry, who's that? Okay, must be the second destroyer coming in on us. Right. In which case... Right. There we go. Depth charge is coming in on us. There he is. Head full and hard right on that rudder. So look, he's dropping depth charges directly in our path. Head full. There they are. Can you see them? This is when we turn. Depth charges in the water, sir. Again, as I keep saying, the depth charge looks very impressive and scary, but it is a very ineffective weapon, statistically speaking. Um, the hydrostatic shock damage that it inflicts upon a U-boat, yeah, that's great and all, but you do have to get relatively close and hit the exact depth, or, you know, close enough to the exact depth. It's a really... Okay, they, they've actually gauged the depth correctly now. Yikes. They're all the way to the bottom. Okay. Yeah, we do need to be careful. Right. Rudder one degrees to port. Return to yes, course. Bring speed down. Ahead slow. Current speed one knots. So we can actually change our depth now. We could change our depth to be much shallower. And they'll just miss us. They just sink past us. Thank you, Xena. Thank you very much, Xena. Alrighty then. Uh, so let's do that. So spin the ship, bring the vessel around. Whoops. So here comes our other destroyer. Uh, yep. Keep turning. Give it another save, just in case the game decides to spaz out and crash. Do 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 do. There we go. Thank you, Xena. Ah uh, yes, uh, timed bombs, basically. Uh, PBRGM. It's just a it's just a barrel, effectively, um, weighted barrel with an explosive explosive device that's timed. You fling them off the back of the ship. It's all very simple, mechanically simple and easy to manufacture. Right. So we're down to one knot only. Just trying to sneak away in the darkness at 88 meters deep. Uh, ideally, we'd go lower, but obviously we're in shallow waters, and we're quite some distance from favourable waters. Okay. So, they're trying to ascertain our exact position. Uh, bring up speed just an easy weensy bit, please. Set speed about three knots. Uh, do we have... Okay, diesel engines, stern quarters, electric engines. Yep, people are working hard. Uh, bring... Yeah, it's fine. Carry on. <laughs> Can you loot the wrecked ship? <laughs> no. Nice idea, though. Although, that being said, they are trying to loot us big time. Very soon, in fact, in a few weeks' time, there's about to be the famous incident uh, where a British commando raid attack a U-boat that was surfaced by pretending to be its resupply, or rather its repair ship. 
Uh, when they successfully attack and board the vessel, uh, they are able to secure an Enigma machine. A very valuable find, along with the code books as well. So, allowing us to read and understand German enig Enigma machines, but read German code. Uh, it caused a little bit of controversy a few years ago when that film was made by Hollywood and all of a sudden all the British commandos were turned to American commandos because, you know... <laughs> Hang on. Depth charges in the water, sir. Yeah, but they're way off. We're fine. That's, why are they so way off? Okay. Are they way off? Depth charges in the water, sir. Yeah, they're miles away. We're fine. Okay. Yeah, they're all the way over there. Charges in the water, sir. Right. I'm feeling nervous. Are they? Are they going to hit us? And I'm just being stupid. Bearing zero. Right. There's our bow. Yeah, we're fine. Thank you, Toxic Knox. Thank you very much, Toxic. Uh, there was also another incident where, much later, I believe, in the war, um, there was a very valiant... Oh, you, holy shit, like a, an American crew, uh, particularly a sergeant, who, the details of which are a bit hazy on me. It was a few months ago that I read it. Um, he actually boarded it, so they were trying to scuttle a U-boat, and they'd actually set down the charges, I think. And an, an extremely brave American sergeant actually boarded the boat, stormed it, along with his men. Even knowing that the U-boat was going to explode any second, and yet they successfully defused the charges. It was like, holy shit, dude. Like, balls of steel. I'm surprised the U-boat didn't sink the moment you boarded it. But my point is, the U-boats carry very, very valuable intelligence. In the form of the code books and the Enigma machines. Both of which must be destroyed before abandoning abandoning the U-boat. For otherwise you'll compromise the entire fucking thing. U-505, apparently. U-Spiral says 571. You, you both can't be, right? German submarine U-505. Let's have a look. So it was one of the newer type submarines. Uh, captured, captured by the US Navy in June 1944. So she has the, has the distinction of the most heavily damaged U-boat ever successfully returned to port on her fourth patrol. So what's this, sorry. And the only submarine whose commanding officer took his own life in combat conditions on her tenth patrol. Following six botched patrols. So she was captured on the 4th of June 1944. Uh-oh. By the United States Navy Task Force. Uh, the crew were captured and taken as prisoners of war. So who was the submarine that did the job? Hang on. A uh, submarine. Who was the sergeant, sorry, that did the job? La 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 la. <clears throat> uh, here we go. So it was a lieutenant. Albert David came alongside the submarine and entered through the conning tower. They secured the charts, the code books, they closed the scuttle valves and disarmed the demolition charges. Holy shit, balls of steel. Eight-man party led by Lieutenant Albert David. Well done then. Okay, more, more crucially though, we're about to get blown up if we don't do something. Um, right. Right, where is that exactly? That is... Okay, they're just circling right now. They're just trying to determine our exact position. Keep cruising away. So we're just cruising along at three knots. Oop. Uh, give me, give me the closest warship target. Warship closing. Very two one six. Two one six, which is two one six. There he is. Give me a hard left. That looks like his run that way, I think. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. Yep. Made the right call with the rudder. 
pull away, pull away, pull away. Bring us up to six knots. We're turning away from it. We're fine. Okay, in which case, come back down again, three knots, and return to our previous course. Yes, sir. Return into course, sir. Okay. Just trying to get the fuck away from this. I think we've only got the one destroyer pursuing us now, so hooray! Let's also try and, yeah, minimize our profile. So there it is. It's moving in front of us now. Okay. There we go. So just in front of us. Somewhere over there. I can hear it. What's it doing? Is it doing another depth charge run? Maybe? I think it's just looping right now. It's just trying to come around, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. Just creep away. Come down to Current one knot. Zero knots. Just make it as hard Current as possible for them to find us. Knots. Okay. Turn enemies pinging, so there we go. Just present the smallest target possible. Where are they? There they are. Rudder right amidship. Okay. Uh, can you hear them? Can you tell me where they are, please? Hydrophone contact, follow the nearest warship. One, three, seven. One, three, seven. Copy that. Rudder, five degrees to port. Okay, one, three, seven. So that would be there. Warship, One, three, four. One, three, four. Oh, they might be coming around for a depth charge run. Warship, One, One, three, five. Eight, there they are. Yes, they are. That's all right. That's our tail. They're going to miss us by a mile. Bring the rudder right slightly. Yeah, we're fine. Wait, there they are. Depth charges in the water. We don't even need to speed up, to be honest. We're already clear. Okay. Yeah, we're doing okay. Not too bad. One big target, one small target, eh? Right. If you catch the depth charge, you can throw it back. No, you keep it as a souvenir. That's what we did with the German naval mines. We fished them out, we defused them, and now they're sitting pretty along our coastline. Cemented down as, like, souvenirs. I think some of them have got coin slots in them for, for collecting money for charity. They're, p they're painted blue, if I remember correctly. All up and down the UK coast. <laughs> right. So we're just trying to creep away. Uh, return to pre-plotted course. Yes, sir. Just travelling one knot. Speed up time a little bit. It's a bit tedious. Trying to evade the little bugger. Is that him? Just trying to figure out where we are. Enemies pinging us. Here they come. Right. Here he comes for a depth charge run. Oh, there he is. Hello. Yeah, you've already missed. We're fine. Depth charges in the water. Boom, boom, boom. He's got the depth right, though. Look, look at that. Where we are, depth wise. Best chance against a destroyer would be surfacing and using the deck gun. You'd need a whole lot of. Yeah, no, that's suicide. Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. On the one side, you have a destroyer with, <laughs> with a lot of guns on it, fast moving and armoured. And on the other side, you've got basically a sealed tin, the slightest piercing of which prevents us from properly diving. And we have one gun, which is completely exposed. So any men up atop are just going to get hosed with an MG. No, any U-boat on the surface is known as a dead U-boat. I was watching a scene from, uh, from is it Greyhound? That um, I haven't actually seen the film. I might, I'm tempted to watch it now. It's like a U-boat film, but it's, it's from the perspective of like a convoy destroyer. And there's a scene where... One of the German, like, U-boat, either commanders or officers, in the middle of a storm, decides to get on the radio from the surface and start taunting the Allies. And he, he's all like, Ah, we're going to hunt you, American. And it's like, how long before we kill you? And he starts, like, howling down the radio. And I think it's supposed to be creepy, and it's a little creepy. Well, like, the scene itself. But I'm just sitting there going... You are so taunting death, sir. You are taunting a destroyer. <laughs> it's like they're gonna eat you up. It's a destroyer. Like, you can fire all the torpedoes you have, sir. A slight turn to midship and you miss. You know, fucking... It's a destroyer. They destroy. You're a U-boat. Your best chance for survival is the destroyer not finding you, which you're making easy by using the radio. Yeah, by, by broadcasting on the radio. <laughs> I think it's just Hollywood, isn't it? It's like, oh my god, U-boats are scary. Yeah, to the convoyman, to the, the merchant seaman on the convoys. To the destroyer, it's like, blow, the, blow him up. Get the depth charges, blow him up. Okay, so they're trying to ping and figure out where we are. Oops, hello. Where are they? Ooh, that's a bit... That's a good one. Okay, up, 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 up. Turn, 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 turn. Hard turn, let's go. Head flank, give me a head flank. That's actually a good run. And they've got their depth. Don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare. Maybe they're out of depth. Okay. Oh no, they're not out of depth charges. They just deployed too late. We're fine. Yes, sir. Turn to course. Head slow. Head slow. So we're just trying to get away from this bugger. It was a wolf pack, though, not just a loner. Fair, yeah. But um, a quick, yeah. I, honestly, it's crazy. It's just, you know, any other U-boat officer is going to slap him away from the radio and say, you fucking stupid. Okay. It's like a, it's like a destroyer taunting a battleship or something. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, are you sure you want to do that? Thank you, Macon. Thank you very much, Macon. Uh, yes, PBRG. So we've got to escape and return back to Saint Nazaire, which is the name of our port in occupied France. Contact merchant moving away. Very one, well, five, it's, a, it's ours for now. The Allies might have something to uh, say about that later, when they return. F well, when they return France to the French. Hello, it's creeping up, uh, creeping up. Hydrophone operator, where is he? <clears throat> Warship closing, bearing one zero six. One zero six. He's all the way over there. All right then, probably going to appear in our path in a minute then. Okay, just trying to get away from this bugger. Warship bearing. There he is. Oh, he's already missed. Closing. Hmm. I wonder if I. Where is he? Yeah, he's way off. I've just got an idea. Let's um, up speed a little bit. Head standard. Hard right. What happens if we hold him on our tail? I'm just curious. Let's experiment. 
So up speed so we can maneuver faster. So he can hear us on on, yeah, on our on his um fucking what's the word? Hydrophones. But if we present the smallest target possible, I wonder if we can just evade him entirely. Hang on. Keep giving me reports, please, Walter. Where is he? Hydrophone, come on, let's go. Two, one, five. Okay, keep moving. Hard rudder. So what I want to, yeah, what I'm trying to do is keep him on my tail, so we have the tiniest possible profile for their sonar. So two, so yeah. Two, two. Keep turning that rudder. Go ahead, ahead full. Two zero six. So it's coming around. Okay, here we go. Here goes their ping. One nine seven. So they're there. Three, good, we're getting closer. Okay, hold the midship. Down speed. Okay, I've gone overboard a bit. Okay. Warship bearing 168, so he's there. Keep going. No, maintain a head slow. A head slow. <laughs> Where is he? Keep reporting. Warship moving away. Bearing seven one. Seven one. I beg your pardon. Contact Separate warship, maybe. Away. Bearing seven zero one. No, 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 you dingus! Warship Give me the warship. Seven seven moving away. There can't be warship a second. Moving away. Bearing seven nine. Why are you following that one? Is there another warship coming at us? I hope not. What? Has it just moved around us that quickly? In which case... Okay. Oh, of course! Sorry! You're right, folks. He's in my blind spot. Thank you. That's it. So he's given me the nearest sound contact for the warship he can hear at the convoy. Okay, that's a good sign. That indicates that... Well, he's in my blind spot. So therefore... We should be a very tiny target on the Razdik. Uh, okay, it's enough. I can hear him. He's over there. Rudder one, degrees to starboard. Rudder two, nine, degrees to starboard. What's he doing? There he is. Uh, so battery, yeah, we're still good. Battery, oxygen, everything's good. Okay. Rudder one, four, head full. Head full. Which way is his rudder facing? He's turning that way. Depth charges in the water, sir. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, all the way, all the way around. Yeah, we're just sort of creeping away from this destroyer. We'll get away from it. We'll get away from him eventually. Good God, is it 11 in the evening? What the fuck? Okay. Sneak away, best we can. Speed up the time a little bit. Give it another save in case we get blown up. Right, um, so DD1. Still being pursued by this destroyer. Just trying to get away from him. Again, so if, if we were if we were at a deeper, um, if we were deeper, if we could dive deeper, then it would be easier to escape him. 
but uh, it's very shallow waters here. There we go. Keep moving. There he is, somewhere over there. Would it be worth pinging the depth? Um, I think we're... No, we're pretty much scraping the sand right now, aren't we? Holy shit. There's some crabs that are like, hey, hey, hey. Just a U-boat comes gliding in. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Oi, mate. You got a license for that U-boat. You haven't paid your U-boat like, oh, that's a, that's a good one. That's a bloody good one. That's a really good one. A head full. Oh, no, he's turning. He's, he's done goofed. He's turning out. He had a good one. He's lined up. Now he's turning. Okay. Which way is his rudder? In the water, sir. Yeah, we're fine. Head slow. Head slow. <clears throat> yes, sir. He's trying to creep out of here. Of course, sir. Okay. Yep, you got to pay for your U-boat license. Here in the UK, we get these really aggressive letters through our letterbox. Uh, from if you haven't paid your TV license, it starts off as like, Dear sir or ma'am, please know that this property hasn't paid for the TV license. And then it gradually gets ever more aggressive. It's really quite dis disheartening, to be honest. It's full of like big red letters saying, An investigation has begun. An agent has been dispatched to your house. We are scanning your area with enormous, like, in caps, bold, red text. The fine is a potential, you know. You could potentially be sent to the Tower of London, where they cut your head off with a spoon. I'm not that far. I'm not even. I don't even. Not, I'm not even exaggerating that much. A little bit. It's like fucking hell, Jesus. What's a TV license? Basically, it's the fee that you have to pay, so that the BBC can keep making episodes of Sherlock, which suck, or Doctor Who with biting social commentary about the current political climate here on Earth, instead of, you know, aliens and space and all the other stuff that we really give a shit about. That's what you pay the TV license for. Oh, and Mark Gattis cameos and whatever it is he's doing. That's pretty much it. Did you know that Sherlock had a secret sister that he just forgot about? Oh, Jesus Christ. Really? Really? That's the best you got? Really? Really? Sherlock, really? <sighs> yes, sorry. Um, I, I, di I did love diving down that rabbit hole um, uh, of um, YouTubers who were doing various video essays talking about the Sherlock thing. And apparently, so the, the, last, the last season of Sherlock, BBC Sherlock, sorry, uh, not to confuse, there's like an American, I think it's called Elementary, sorry. So the BBC Sherlock Holmes. Apparently the last season was so bad that fans thought it was a joke. <laughs> fans thought that it was a, a prank to um, hype up like a secret episode that was going to air. It wasn't, it was just shit. <laughs> it was just really bad. And apparently after that, the whole thing collapsed because it kind of knocked... There's the DD. Hang on, let me just go full stop. Apparently it just completely like pulled the whole like veil off the thing because you realize that all of these production errors weren't setting up a big secret or something. They were just production errors. They were just bad writing. He's a persistent bugger, isn't he? Look. So they haven't even started their depth charge run though, look. Uh, yes, uh, H Bomber guy did one of those, didn't he? There's also a bunch of others as well. Um, damn, I can't remember a name. There's a YouTuber that talked about um, specifically something called queer baiting, 
which is where you try to appeal to a gay demographic by sort of going, hey, we have a gay character or something, but you don't really do anything with it. You just you just use it for, like, like marketing. And apparently they were doing lots of that as well? But it was, like, really obvious. It was, like, super in-your-face. Ah, are they a couple? Will they? Won't they? And yet every time it comes up, apparently they just, like, shrug it off as just a, a joke or something. Sarah Z, that's the one. Thank you, Siegfried. Yes. She did a really uh, a similar video on, um... Fuck, what was it? It was like a... It was like a vampire... It was like a Buffy the Vampire style show, but it had two brothers called Cass... No, called Dean and something else. And they introduced an angel, like a male angel. And... Was it Vampire Diaries or that something else? Supernatural, that's the one. Thank you. And apparently they introduced this angel... And there was lots of, like, like homoerotic chemistry between the main character and this male angel. And, of course, it turns out it was all just, you know, was, apparently it was queer baiting. It was just, um, and I was just sitting there with a the popcorn just listening to the whole story going, what the fuck? And, um, it, it, spoilers for her video, I guess. Have I lost him? Hang on. But apparently it was really funny because the final episode of, like, the season involved that angel bloke confessing his love. Something like, oh, I've always loved you or something. And then he immediately dies. <laughs> it's like, that's his reward. I love you. <laughs> Just instantly. It was kind of like, really? And then, then the fans stopped and blinked and they went, wait a minute, did... Did a gay character just get represented on television and then just got killed for it? Because it was like... Uh, it, um, fuck, to explain. Like, um, in the context of the show, like, when he's at his most happiest, he dies or something? So because he's in love, he dies. So because he's gay, he dies. He died because he was gay. Specifically, in the writing or something. Probably not explaining it very well, sorry. <laughs> but it's like... <laughs> yeah, like the, the, like, the fans were like, what the fuck just happened? Okay, I think we've got some distance from it now. It's trying to ping us. Exactly where is he? Sorry, I'm losing the plot a bit. He's over there. Right. One, two, four. Degrees to start. Current speed. Zero knots. Enemy is picking us, sir. Anyway, it's, it's a very funny video. So uh, look up Supernatural by Sarah Z on YouTube. It's a bit of a long watch. It's, it's like a vlog style. So she just sort of sits there and talks about it with a cup of tea. So that's our bow. It's over there. I know. Not Herzi. He's found us again. I thought we lost him. He's still searching. How far away is he? He's under a kilometre. 700 metres. We did make some distance from him. Okay. Kill the engine entirely. I've got an idea. Okay, they're good. Right, he's switched off his Asdic now. Right, so creep away a little bit now. Speed, zero so knots. he's going around that way, isn't he? So here's my idea. Oops, fucking up. <laughs> yeah, turn Yeah, turn to face him. And then the moment the, the depth charges go off, we're going to book it high speed for a bit. For like a few seconds. Here he comes. Traveling. Yep. We should. Yeah, we should evade this quite easily. Nevertheless, come up to three knots. Current speed two knots. Two knots. It's fine. Okay. okay he hasn't even started his depth charge run, has he? There we go, now he's starting. Full speed. Okay. Did he even do it? Is he out of depth charges, maybe? Okay. I was hoping to go full speed then when he was activating his depth charges. Oh well. Um, do it anyway. Fuck it. Flank speed. Ahead, flank. Get some speed before he act. Yeah, get some distance before he initiates Asdic again. And then the moment he does, 
kill the engine, sit still. Here we go. Pull, 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 pull. So we're getting as much distance as we can. He's in our blind spot. Eight knots, let's go. And then, right, slow and steady. Current Back down to one knot. Knots. Current speed, zero knots. He'll start pinging any second now. <coughs> Sorry, pardon me. How far is the convoy? Um, it is currently moving away at around 13 kilometers, but we have another target at six kilometers. Maybe an unrelated, unrelated warship. Probably a patrol boat or something here to assist. There we go. Erica, right, there because it's Aztec. Come full stop. Turn right a little bit. Rudder one six degrees to starboard. If he is picking us, sir. There he is. Hold and rudder, rudder and midship. Rudder zero degrees to port. Rudder zero. Sorry, um, port. whoever eats lemons. Apologies, zero sorry. Knots. Just in the middle of a maneuver there. Thank you for subbing. Am I still reloading the torpedoes? No, no, we cancelled that action. Okay. He's trying to figure out where we are. There he is now. Turn rudder right slightly. Turn rudder right full. Right. Tricky one, isn't it? Maybe we should just power away at speed. How long will the batteries last if we did that, though? A while. Keep coming around. What's he doing? Alright. So he didn't do depth charges last time. Maybe he is indeed out. <coughs> okay, he's pretty much lined up, so hard right on the rudder. Start evasion now. Head flank. Let's go. Head flank. If he does have depth charges, it'll be a good run. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare. I think he might be out, everybody. He's used up his supply. Good for us, eh? Alright, in which case, let's start just powering the fuck out of here. He's toothless. Let's go. He'll no doubt start shattering us all the same, but yeah. Ahead standards. Ahead one third. And let's just get the fuck out of here. So there he is. Watch out for the whatever that is. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So merchants are still moving away, long range. We can probably start reloading the uh, torpedoes now. Just worried about whatever that is. Okay. Maybe get a bit higher in the water. Yeah, we'll still stay. We'll still uh, stay low in the hopes that we can confuse the uh, confuse their Asdic. Indeed, they can still bring in another destroyer. This one, for example, come and sink us. What is that course? Uh oh, that doesn't look good. That looks like it's coming towards us. Whatever it is. What is that? Do you reckon? What bearing is that? That's on bearing seven zero. Uh, Herman, give me seven zero. What can you hear? It's a merchant. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, shit. That's us. Bow cord is damaged. We're scraping against the sand. Indeed we are. Um, right, silent running off. Damage control teams get to stations. Got a light flooding. Bloody hell, that's worse than that. Pull up, we're hitting the, we're hitting the thing. So somewhere ahead of us, there is a coral reef, and on that coral reef are some fish, 
and they're just hanging out, they're enjoying the day, and then all of a sudden the bow of a U-boat crashes through the side of the reef, scattering the cleaner fish. The moray eels look very, very cross. The crabs are like, hey, hey, hey. Okay. So yes, we've just scraped off that sandbank. Whoopsie daisy. Right, so that's in fact a merchant. That's interesting. What could that be? Well, this destroyer is still following us, which is a bit of a pain. Can't do anything without depth charges, though. Don't say depth charges in the water, otherwise I will shit myself. Yeah, it's empty. So what are you? Merchant slow moving away. Could that be the wounded whaling ship? No, it's not. It's too far from the convoy. What are you? You're coming towards us. You're not even moving away. It's a completely unrelated ship. Just sailing into this mess. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if we surfaced, took a quick cheeky shot, that would be the ultimate fuck you to the to the DD, wouldn't it? They're hunting a, a U-boat, and we go on a, on an attack run of another vessel while being hunted. <laughs> Should we do it? Fuck it. Let's get a bit of excitement. <laughs> They're gonna fire at our conning tower the moment we fucking pull this shit. All right, here we go. Bring us up to periscope depth. Periscope depth. Oh, this yeah, this is the never mind the wolf howling down the radio. This is the ultimate, you know, sucker dick move from a U-boat. We're going to continue our attack on the merchants, even though you're right there hunting us. Alright. So we're currently at 73 meters and rising. Uh, we're out of silent running, so they know exactly where we are. Weapons management, we have a uh, torpedo in the queue for loading. Shit, how close to... Hmm. We could fire the gas torpedo from the aft tube. Depends how alert the front target is. Hang on. Bow is rising. 67 meters, 66 meters. Uh, merchant 091, so it's that way. Okay, keep coming. Uh, maybe don't necessarily go straight to periscope depth. Keep us at around. Yeah, keep us around 30 meters. So let him fly over us if needs be. Lower the attack periscope just in case he clips it with his bow. We don't want to lose another periscope. Hello. Nobbed. Oh yeah, so there is something over there. <laughs> Let's zoom over. Why not? Bit cheaty, but see what we're dealing with. It's a small thing. What are, what are you? Ah, you are indeed Merchant Marie. <laughs> You're a tiny little tugboat. No idea what's going on right about now. What an unworthy target for a torpedo. What if we took the destroyer? That would be really... Hang on. It's about to go over our heads. But with no depth charges, there's bugger all it can do. Hmm. Let's give it a welly. Seems a bit stupid destroying a destroyer. What? Why? You know? But fuck it. <clears throat> there it is. Okay, bring us up to around 17 meters. Hello. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, there we go. What are you exactly? Can I lock you from under? No. Periscope depth now. Periscope depth. Lower that. Make sure the observation periscope is also down. We don't want any whoopsies. I've already saved it if this goes wrong. Give me the aft torpedo tube. Um, okay. Get periscope depth. 
Give me a fast moving impact shot. Fast mover impact at only two meters. Very shallow. Where is it? Hydrophone operator, give me its exact position. Portion, moving away. Bearing Bearing one, one, zero, four. Four, one zero four, it's over there. Alright. Keep doing yeah, hard rudder, hard rudder. Okay. One, two, one, two, six. Periscope depth. Give me periscope depth. Let's go. Come on. Got to get it. It's turning four, around us. Bearing. One, four, zero. Moving away. Come on. Got to do this quickly, boys. Got to do this quickly. Lock, 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 lock. Open rear tube. Bearing. One, five, five. Moving away. It's a hard turn. It's on a very hard turn. We've got to do this now. And fire. Tube down. There we go. Gas torpedo. Impact. Two meters depth. Is it going to turn into it? We're going to get lucky. Ooh. Is it going to bounce off the hull? It's turning hard. It's it's it's, it's all right. It's speeding up. It's speeding up. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Don't bounce! Don't bounce! <laughs> bye bye propellers. Oh, bye bye TV. Carl, give me a woo! Yay. Yeah, I got a yay instead. That's fine. <laughs> Promotion for that man. Warship bearing two one nine, moving away. Okay. Well, I don't think we've destroyed it, mind. But at least we gave it something to think about. Rudder one. Degrees to start. All right. Rudder two two two. Degrees to start. Ah, <sighs> hello, tugboat. Do you have a moment to talk about car insurance? Warship two three one, moving away. Right. I'm sorry, it's still going? Oh, it has another propeller still up. Damn it, I thought we took out both of them. Is the flooding going to be enough to destroy it, though? I hope we've at least gimped it so we can get the fuck away from it. Because otherwise we can't man the damn deck gun. I'm not wasting a torpedo on a tug. I'll get laughed at back at the Kreese Marine pub. All sitting there drinking our beer with the monk picture on it. <laughs> Whatever German German men, men drink. I, I ordered some beers from Germany. They all have monks on them for some reason. Like pictures of monks. I think they've got like a monk fetish in Germany. It's weird. Um, anyway. Yes. And schnapps. Yes. Ah, what did you think? Ah, oh, we sunk the, the illustrious, the aircraft carrier of the British. Ah, oh, well done. What did you think? Ah, uh, a tugboat, two of them. <laughs> ah, fine, fine. They must have been big tugboats. No, not really. Okay. Cool. Well, at least we've uh, we've taken out one of its propellers and screwed it the fuck screwed it up big time. All right. What about the other thing? Thank you, Saxonist. Thank you very much. Ah, so we could... Oh, no, wait, that's the... Sorry, that's the destroyer. Where's the tug? Here you are. Contact warship closing. Bearing one, zero, so it's closing just under two kilometers. Hmm. Okay. It's probably armed, though, isn't it? Am, am I wasting a torpedo on a tug? Seems stupid. Thank you, uh, Cephalon. Thank you very much, Cephalon. Large trawler? Is it a trawler? Oh, do they know it's Christmas time? It's a trawler. Okay. Uh, fine. Find a gas torpedo against a trawler. It's probably doing evasive maneuvers anyway. What's the point? No, come on. Let's not waste a. I thought. It was, sorry, I thought it was a yeah, wrong wrong target. It's 530 tons. It's embarrassing. I'm just humiliating myself. No, oh, fine. <sighs> what is the draft on the large trawler? 3.4 meters. <sighs> Give me a magnetic torpedo at 3. Point <laughs> Jesus. Okay. One, two, three. Right. Magnetic torpedo. Slow speed. On a trawler. 
Open torpedo tube one. Can't believe I'm doing this. No, I can't use the deck gun. The DD will waste me. Fire. There we go. Torpedo away. Periscope down. One minute until impact. So again, the electric torpedoes were very fucking temperamental. Uh, especially the magnetic triggers, which were all the rage, state of the art. So they simply work by detecting, well, being calibrated to the, the Earth's magnetic field. And then when it detects a major deviation, so a metal object near it, preferably above it, it will explode. And the idea was that, well, you can get, you can get the, a large enough ship, the one you want. Hell, you could even have it so that they're sensitive enough so that they will ignore smaller ships, such as minesweepers. And you can go for the big ship, big things like battleships, which is what they did with German magnetic mines. They would drop them into the, say, like the entrances to harbours, and they'd have them ignore anything smaller than like a big cruiser or something. Or trawlers or whatever. There we go, it looks great. Didn't change its direction. Bloody hell. Carl, don't yay this. Or woo. Yeah, there we go. So we've, we've attacked a fishing trawler with a torpedo. Um, sorry, what was I saying? So, uh, yes, one of the tricks, uh, once we've captured one of the German mines in Britain, once we figured this out, minesweepers started working in pairs, dragging huge cables to pretend that they were a much larger ship. So they would um, run a, an electrical current through the cables and effectively pretend that they were an enormous battleship or something triggering all of the magnetic mines that the Luftwaffe had been spending quite some time setting up. <laughs> uh, there we go, they're going under. It's alright, they'll get to their lifeboats, they'll be rescued, they're super close to the shore. There's typically uh, an eastbound wind coming in from here, so I'm sure they'll be fine. You can hear the flooding on the front, see? The compartments are flooding. Okay. Right, let's return to our course. Yes, sir! Return into course, sir! Enthusiastic there. Navigations officer. Uh, right, and then let's uh, let's get back to occupied France, eh? Uh, I do need to wrap up the stream because it's almost midnight. Bloody hell! It's eleven past. Uh, sorry, half past eleven. There we go. Oh no! Yay! Oh, Carl gave a yay. Seriously, that's not yay worthy, Carl. It's a fishing trawler. Like, we've denied the British their strategically important fish and uh, chips and cod. This is why Scampi is so expensive. Okay. Down they go, sinking into the gloom. In fact, have they already not far to the bottom? There we go. Which ship was it? Which shipwreck? I think it was the Bismarck? When they found her wreck. Bloody hell. When they found the re the wreck of the Bismarck, they discovered that it, it, through sheer chance, it had actually managed to strike an underwater volcano, and had basically slid all the way down the side of this enormous undersea volcano, causing a, a mudslide, riding it all the way down. Mm. 
Uh, that would have been somewhere here, I think. Where was the Bismarck destroyed? I think around right about here, roughly. Because it looped round, and then it went here, and then it went, oh, holy shit, it's the hood. And it fought the hood, and then the hood just randomly exploded because it felt like it. The Bismarck was like, oh, okay, it's a bit weird. And then the Bismarck went all the way around here, being chased by uh, other ships. What was it being chased by? Uh, the supporting battleship that was like, well, a bunch of, a bunch of des destroyers as well. Um, front fell off. No, the back fell off on the hood, actually. It split in half. The whole thing blew up and broke in half. It's really sad. Um, only three survivors were recovered from the hood of a crew of more than a thousand. It was very, very sad. Um, and then uh, it went around here, and then they did a little clever thing. Sorry, uh, was it the Rodney? I think the Rodney came in later. I don't think it was the Rodney. It was the Ark Royal, I think it was. No, Prince of Wales. I think it was the Prince of Wales. Anyway, so it reached here, and then it pulled a fast one, and it basically splits off with its um, Prince Eugen, which is the other battleship it was with. And then Prince Eugen actually made it back safely, but then the Bismarck went here, and then it was attacked with uh, multiple torpedoes by swordfish bombers. One of them hit the rudder, and it was jammed, and, that, oop, and that's when it started in its, in its sort of death spin, and the whole fucking Royal Navy uh, shelled the crap out of it. And just like the hood, it is also very sad. Uh, there's no uh, sugar coating it, and you know, the, obviously honor, honoring the the valor and the bravery of the crews. For the Bismarck, fought on and did its best, but uh, yeah, there were very few survivors from the Bismarck. Also, uh, the sailors were trying to surrender apparently, and the uh, a chaplain aboard, I think it was the Rodney, was begging the captain to please stop firing, um, stop shooting. There are survivors. You know, the, the Germans are trying to abandon ship. But uh, at that point, the Royal Navy was enraged by the loss of the hood, and they had very clear orders, sink the Bismarck, so they did not stop firing. It's quite sad. Okay, as for us, we're returning back to France. So, are we clear enough to safely make it on the surface? Well, it's daytime, I dare not. Stay underwater. Contact, merchant, moving away, bearing. Okay. New message received. New message received. We should report our current contacts. Encountered a British submarine in the, in the North Atlantic. Fired two torpedoes, both missed. Oh, wow. Alright. Okay, then. Let's just get out of the engagement area. Speed up the time. Wait for nightfall, then do a dash out of here. All right. So we're traveling at four knots. What's our batteries? Battery reserves are good. So what's that there? A merchant? A warship? Hold up. Are we are we being pursued? What's behind us? Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. You're big, and bad, and very scary looking, and I are we going to get pinged? Oh, fuck, don't start this whole depth charge thing again. Uh, let's Bring go silent down, running. silent running. New depth, five, two meters. Do I have a rear torpedo? Nope. That's a proper fleet destroyer. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, how far away? Uh, yeah, let's start sinking. Down, 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 down. Damn it, are we about to start the whole damn depth charge bullshit again? I think we are. Okay, they're a mere one kilometer away. Rudder two, one, degrees to port. Yeah, that's a full Royal, Royal Navy. Is it crew? What is it? Hang on. Can I get a quick cheeky peek on it? No, we're already going down. Let's just go down quick. We're not diving? Yes, we are. See the front of the boat? Oh, shit. It's sweeping. It's going to be using its ASDIC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the big brother of the fishing boat. Oh, no. Is that the destroyer that we hit? Is it still steaming along? Not destroyed? Not 
Correct that. Two, zero. No. This is a new... Okay, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know what this is. These are submarine killers, aren't they? This is a hunter-killer group. That's not a convoy escort. This is Royal Navy. So that's not like merchant marine escort. This is a dedicated hunter, submarine hunter group. They must have headed, headed here from Portsmouth. Okay. Right. <laughs> Uh-oh. These ones have the tech, the weapons, and the training. They're going to work in pairs. They're going to hunt us. Okay. Uh-oh. My god, if they have hedgehogs. Can you imagine? I really hope they don't have hedgehogs. It's too early, right? When's the hedgehog? Tell me they don't have hedgehogs. I don't see any hedgehogs. We should be alright. Yeah, I see depth charges, but I see no hedgehogs. Okay, bring us down. We need to go down. We're being pinged anyway, so fuck it. Up speed. speed. In short, a hedgehog is a forward firing mortar. So instead of big fat depth charges. Uh oh. Instead of big fat depth charges. Yeah, he's coming hard. Okay. Quickly. Hard left, hard left. Is that a hedgehog? What's he firing? No, 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 no. Just depth charges um, to the side. Wow! Okay, their tactics are way better. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh, no, 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 I need my best repairman up there. Get up there quick. Get an officer as well. Uh, right, where's my repair crew? Quickly. Uh, up speed. Head standard. Someone get that damn steam hatch fixed. Get that flooding sorted. Okay. Uh, quickly, more men. More men. I need those men. Right, so we're sinking. It's not uncontrolled yet. So we'll have that flooding under control in 30 seconds. We'll be destroyed in about 8 minutes. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Wow, could you see the difference? Side firing depth charges and rear firing. They've got the equipment and the training. Okay. Uh, return to course. Turn into their turn. Okay, we're leveling out. Give me one ping beneath the keel. Go down by an additional 10 meters. Okay. How are we doing on those repairs, gentlemen? Quickly get that flooding under control. The hull's okay. Any systems damaged beyond repair? Nope. Oh, that officer is tired. Swap him out. Yikes. Uh, okay. Some men in the bow quarters. Can I get them in the stern torpedo room? Can you at least try and get a torpedo in the tube? There goes the Razdik. They're pinging. Enemy is pinging us, sir. I'm aware. Where are they? They're there. Okay. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Okay, how are we doing? Not... Good. We're about to be trailing our stern due to that flooding. 
Um, flooding's almost under control. One minute until that's under control. One minute seventeen. Okay, we've almost got it. Damn it, don't scrape the back of the U boat against the sand. Thank you, Poo Corfi T Bone. Thank you very much, Poo. Thank you. Um, so if you're just joining, um, basically what ha what's happened is a fishing boat was minding its own business, delivering fish and chips to the United Kingdom, and then I decided to basically do the whole, you're in a club and this U-boat slaps your girlfriend's ass thing, and the British response was to send two hunter-killer anti-submarine destroyers to kick the shit out of me and one of them just did and now I'm running okay um, right he's on my tail let's go slow I can't take it out of silent running because they're still working on the okay no, they're, they're done you're done no, they still need time to recover from that flooding come down speed a little bit though um, okay that's my observation periscope Good. Uh, hydrophone operator, where are they? Warship closing. Nine, four. That's the other warship though, isn't it? Oh no, no, it's that warship. Yeah, they're still turning. Warship they're not on. They're not on the attack one, yet. Zero, zero. Closing. They're close though. They're trying to get in our path. Okay, there we go. Flooding. Is the flooding sorted? What are they repairing? Port diesel engine damaged. Okay, that can wait. Put us into silent running. All silent running. No more Let's repairs, please. Um, what are the chances Warship of winning the battle against this ship? If I can get a rear torpedo, maybe? Right now, we just need to play the evade depth charges game again. Just trying to figure out where we are. Thank you, Pooh Coffee T Bone, as well. Th thank you very much for your sub bomb, sir. Okay, where is it? It's on. There it is. Okay, we, th we should be okay. It's, it's estimated our position on our on Asdic, but it's not got it correct. Then again, if they got side firing ones, which they do. Okay, look, rear firing. Yeah, <laughs> wow, these are scary. Look at that pattern. It's a wide net they're casting, much wider than the other the other destroyer. How quickly did they estimate the depth as well? My God, look at the difference in training. They're already almost at our depth, almost. Holy shit! Whoa, they completely guessed it. That's our exact depth. <laughs> I'm in danger. Um, okay. Right. Let's try our best to sneak away from this bastard, but holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, up speed again briefly, just while the Aztec is cooking. Alas, I probably need to end the stream there, or at least in a moment, folks. Um, it is getting late. It's almost midnight. It is a work night. I've got lots to do on this bullshittery. Yes, I've done piss them off, haven't I? Do not get between a British man and his fish and chips. No, no, I'll just load it and we'll continue again, like tomorrow, monkey. How are we doing in terms of battery? Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, cool. So thank you for watching, everyone. So in this stream, uh, we have uh, basically uh, attacked a convoy, got a few hits. We got one one sunk ship in the convoy. Yes, sir. Uh, we hit. We damaged yes, a different course, ship, sir. but it got away. Um. And then we destroyed earlier, so one tugboat and then another, like, fishing trawler. Oh, and we hit a destroyer with a uh, torpedo, but then it bogged off. But at least we badly damaged it. But now we're being hunted by a dedicated anti-submarine uh, 
It was, it was a pair. Where's the other one gone? That is a fearsome ship. Okay. Drop speed a little bit. Current speed knots. Yeah, they're pinging. Trying to get yeah, so they've got direct side on profile. I can see the ship. Right. Um. So anyway, thank you again, folks. I'll catch you again later. Uh, one minute. Where's that dog? There she is. Right. Save. There we go. And okay. Oh, uh, oh, is she okay. Yeah, she's fine. Right. Uh, save file. Holy shit. There we go. Save and exit under the save. Yeah, the save name. Holy shit. So yes, that was a bit of Silent Hunter Three. I do strongly recommend. Uh, if you do pick it up. Uh, I do recommend the Grey Wolves expansion, which adds all that immersive World War II stuff, like the messages and I think a whole bunch of scenarios uh, yeah, with with the war unfolding around you. Um, yeah, it's very good. Right, so have a lovely evening, folks. Again, uh, so to recap, I'm trying to finish Divinity Bullshittery Part 1. The video is edited end-to-end, -end, and I'm trying to polish it. So I've got a, a list of fuck-ups that I'm trying to fix. I start the next test render now, so to try and get it, um, yeah, to try and get this render uh, done overnight. And then I check it in the morning and see if the fixes are fixed and make a list of new fixes. So just trying to do my best to get this one over the finish line. So have a lovely evening. See you again soon. Thank you for watching. And uh, let me just have a look and see who's doing what. So right now, so Beastie is doing some Escape from Tarkov. Yuki is doing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Harry is playing some Portal 2... What is that? Uh, is he doing the co-op? What's he doing? No, I think he's doing some workshop maps. Uh, Joink is playing PKA Tour. And Smeagol is playing Battlefield 5. Okay. Who to hand over to? Um, Let's hand over to... Do, 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 do. Yes, hand oh, is he doing co-op with Gary? Okay, in which case, let me hand you over to ZF Harry. He's probably playing Portal co-op with his twin brother. So, um, yes. Uh, one minute. Sorry, where's the chat? It's gone. Lost the chat. Chat, you're gone. Forever. Nope, found you. There we go. Right, so this is ZF Harry and his brother, Gary. Uh, let's see how well they're cooperating. Uh, I'm sure they're, they're doing very well, obviously. You know, being twins, they always get along, right? Right? 